Oh my gosh. Here I'm talking this whole time and there's no, no, I'm glad you guys said something. It's okay. We'll, we'll get it all figured out. Somebody's probably like watching the live later on. Like what even just happened? We'll figure it out or we'll remove it later. Sorry about the sound, guys. Hi, Mar Maricel and Sarah. Welcome, welcome. Um, so I will I will do the the little quick spiel again. <laughs> Hi, I'm Naomi from House of Miscellanea. I'm working on the kit up of <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hi, Shelby. Um, I'm here. Here I am. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm working on kitting up Aji Sai from Diamond Dart Club by Margaret Morales. Let me turn the volume down on my phone. Um, by Margaret Morales. Uh, I saw this kit when it was sneak peeked and I thought to myself, I've got, 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 got to have it. I have to have it. So it, I ordered it like, thank goodness I got on that button. Cause I'll tell you what, I probably would not have gotten it otherwise. Um, so now that I know I had no sound, I guess I, I was messing around with things for so long with, the. Uh, Starting the stream, I didn't even think about the sound part. I always have to hit that button, and I just forgot to hit the button. Um, so playing a little catch up from my whip and chat, which posted yesterday, um, as far as like job prospects and whatever, because that's been kind of the, you know, the thing that's been on my mind the hardest right now. Um, I was turned down for the teacher's aid role, which I'm really bummed about i'm not sure exactly what that decision was based off of um it's okay i'm not it, it's all right maybe i just wasn't a right fit for their company or it's okay i'm bummed but i will get over it um but i got invited to apply for a position with oddly enough the excuse me, the executive director at my old job asked me to apply at her new community. When I left my old position at the community I was working at before, um, a lot of the management left as well. They were very kind of unhappy with the way that corporate treated my situation. Long story, I'm not going to get into, but they were really unhappy with the way that corporate handled my particular situation and many of them left for other horizons, which I'm very flattered for, but you know, they didn't need to, they didn't need to leave for me. I hope that's not the only reason that they left. I'm sure it isn't, but they just couldn't see themselves working for a corporation that would do what they did to me to me. So anyways, she's working at this new community and asked me if I would be interested in coming in for a interview and I said uh yeah sure I'll I'll come in and do an interview with you that's fine I go in and it's like the Klingon death panel right because it's uh the executive director my former executive director the director of nursing and then two other managers I'm not really sure what they were managers of to be honest I, I'm not quite positive but um they I was under the impression from my former executive director that the position that I would be applying for is a, a management position doing like healthcare coordinator. So I would be doing something similar to what I was doing at my last job with regard to um, overseeing the staff, making sure training was up to date, you know, uh, training staff, hiring staff interviewing all, all the stuff, right. And, and doing some hand in the orientation process and whatnot. Cause I did a lot, I wore a lot of hats at my last job. Well, so I, um, I thought that's what I was applying for. And then like, mm, I, I get in there and it's like, my former executive director is not saying much like the director of nursing is leading the the interview which was fine but she's telling me kind of like the person who is in the position that you know they they're thinking about putting me into hasn't left yet 
so okay so the position's not officially open um the they're not and then she like the director of nursing says that they're not really even sure if they're gonna like have position once the other person's out of it so i'm like i'm very confused at this point like what okay then what am i what am i doing here right like i don't understand what i'm doing here if i'm not okay so they're talking about well what about if we start you out as a resident assistant which for those of you who are unfamiliar with like the healthcare world um, hi, Laura. How are you? Um, anybody who's not familiar with the healthcare world, you know, a resident assistant is essentially like it's for lack of a better word, it's like it's grunt work. OK, that and I have I have nothing at all against doing some grunt work. I'm not scared of working. I, in fact, enjoy being with the residents more than I do like the, you know, kind of bureaucracy that comes along with working as a manager. So, like, that doesn't scare me off. However, the position itself is in Madison, which I live in Wisconsin. So, Madison is, like, not a far drive from me, but depending on where you're going in Madison. So, like, Madison is huge and has since enveloped all of these different, like, suburbs. So, like, there's a, a little suburb called Middleton, and it's in the middle of Madison, oddly enough, one called Verona, Fitchburg, um, Monona, um, DeForest, like it's eaten all of these little suburbs along the way, Sun Prairie, like it just keeps chomping all of these little bitty suburbs. Well, Verona is the suburb that this position is in. And in order for me to get there, I have to basically like, there's not a, there's not a good interstate way to get there. So it will take me an hour to commute from my home to Verona, Madison, where this position is. Okay, so if I'm going to do a position where I have to drive every day, m sorry to say, but my, no, no, I'm not sorry to say, my time is valuable, including my time that's in the car. All of my time is valuable. So I am expecting like a certain, um, a certain dollar amount that I don't think that a just a, a resident assistant position is going to offer. Now, granted, Madison is a different beast than where I live. I'm I'm in a smaller town, um, and uh, so doing doing the job of a resident assistant in Madison might offer a different amount than a small town would. So. I'm already a little confused at this point. Like, okay, I guess I was the executive director that like asked me to apply for this uh, healthcare coordinator position isn't saying anything. My former executive director, she's not saying anything. She's just sort of letting the director of nursing do all the talking, which, okay. Um, they're, like the other two that were there was a young man and a young woman. I don't know, I don't remember what their position exactly was supposed to be, if I'm being fully honest. Um, so I was a little confused about that. I know that they were like managers of something, uh, but I, that was kind of unclear. It was just like, it was very, it was very unclear. Okay, the whole, the whole shebang was very unclear. So I'm like, um, okay. So I don't know whether or not I'm supposed to, like, I didn't even fill out an application at this point because I was just going in there kind of on the thought that I sort of kind of already had the job because the executive director, like the person who is in charge of everything there is the one who asked me to apply and or to come in for the interview. And so I was just very, very confused. The dollar amount that they offered me number but in order for me to kind of make sense of my drive time because okay that was the other thing they want me to do part-time so no bennies you guys no bennies i don't know if i can do no bennies in my 40s i am not a young buck anymore so we got to have them bennies um i had to have some mountain dew guys whoo um so the dollar amount that they're offering me 
would be good if I lived in, in Verona or if I lived in Madison or whatever, that'd be fine. I have a Prius, so it's not like I'm, you know, spending a ton in gas, but there's wear and tear included in driving a car an hour to and from. The shift that they want to work part-time is 6.30 to 2.30 in the morning or 2.30 in the afternoon. So 6.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., which would mean I would need to offer myself an hour to get there, maybe an hour and 20 because traffic, weather, whatever. So that would mean me getting up or getting out of my house by like no later than 5.30 in the morning. Like that would be pushing it, right? So that's a little bit like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and then on top of that, I would have to get up at like, give myself even a half an hour to get dressed and put my face together and all of that would be getting up at like uh, 4.45 at the latest. I don't know, you guys. I don't know. And then like the whole, the whole, like, I don't know, I guess sort of lure, right? The carrot. The carrot was, well, you know, you could work here as an RA so you see whether or not you even really like it here. And then if if it works out, you can apply for the healthcare coordinator position if we decide to keep that position. Hey, how are you? Um, I don't know. That just seems like no, no. I think I I, mm. I haven't even filled out the application yet because I was kind of put off by the whole idea that, hi, Jay Lili, um, I was put off by the whole idea of like, you were not transparent with me. It's just like, I kind of find that my past executive director, that that's sort of like her MO is not, I, and I love her. She's a wonderful woman. Um, but it was not to be necessarily really um, forthcoming with the details. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I just, that was very frustrating. I've got um, my, there, I've got my Elizabeth Ward storage, but because I have like uh, four other things kitted up right now, I have four Elizabeth Ward containers, but they're all like mix and match, you know? All of my little, little ones are in another kit. So I am going to use, at least for now, um, I'm going to use my Art Dot uh, Tic Tac containers for the little stuff. And then I'm going to use my Elizabeth Ward for the bigger stuff, um, at least until I can change some kit things around. But I've got more stuff coming from Art Dot tomorrow, but I was not going to wait. I was not going to wait to kit this up. I'm like, no, this is happening today. Um... I've also got my uh, fabric softener squares that I always put into my containers because in Wisconsin, it is static, static, static all day. I did have, I do also have like fabric softener beads, but I'm going to be honest with you guys, th these things are potent smelling and already with them being like three feet from me, they're kind of giving me a headache. So I'm not going to do, hi Val, I'm not going to do that. I'm just not doing that. Um, so yeah, like the teacher's aid position thing, I, they basically, okay, met, I don't remember if, I don't know if you guys remember me mentioning in the whip and chat, but like the staff I said is very young there and the person who is like their HR person, I don't think that if the girl has a degree in HR, like she must have just just graduated because she can't be more than in her early early 20s like early 20s right so she sends me a text message to let me know that they've moved on to other candidates and I will no longer be considered if that tells you anything I don't know that I've ever applied for a company where I received a text message to let me know that I was not like email, sure, phone call, almost always. Never have I ever just received a text message to tell me that I was no longer being considered. Hi, Audrey. Hi, Sherry. Welcome, welcome. So glad you guys can make it. Um, 
yeah, I don't think I've at a place or applied for a place where the the way that you were told no thank you was via a text message. So that I don't know. Okay, I'm bummed that it, I'm bummed that it's not going to work out. I, if I'm if I'm really really honest with myself, I'm really bummed. Here's the thing, guys. I don't understand what life is doing to me right now. Like why I cannot seem to find the right place for me. I went to my therapy appointment today because I've just been like yesterday I had a good old cry. I'm not going to lie. I had uh, I had a full on kind of meltdown because I'm just I'm tired of being at home. I am broke. <laughs> like, come on. I mean, we're not like we're doing OK. I'm broke is what I'm saying. Like, I don't have money to spend on stuff. I have to, you know, rely on my husband, which is a weird thing for me. I've always had my own money. So I'm broke. We're not broke. We're we're OK. Why would I be buying kits if I, you know, um, but he bought this for me. This was my gift. Um, I had my good cry yesterday and then I OK, these are so staticky right now. Um, I talked to my therapist today and I'm like, OK, and he knows about the YouTube channel. He knows about, you know, like everything with the um diamond painting stuff because I won't shut up about it and so he's like you know Naomi I kind I kind of I kind of see this YouTube thing happening for you um and I, I mean well first of all I was kind of flattered he's like you know you're the type of person that anything you're pointed at you can do you can do it and you will do it and I'm like okay um and I don't know maybe I'm gonna make a go of this YouTube thing but I, I can't rely on that, right? I can't just expect that that's going to happen, that I'm going to blow up on YouTube and everything's going to be just peachy keen. I've got to do something, but who knows? I mean, I don't know. Life is doing some funky things right now. Woodland Church. I don't think I'm familiar. Is that Diamond Dark Club? I don't, okay, I'm going to be honest. I don't know, um, uh, I don't know landscapes. I don't do landscapes very much. And so I'm not super, super familiar with landscape stuff. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't know, man. I'm just trying to figure out the direction that life is pointing me in. And I'm just trying to follow that, whatever it happens to be. Um, and, you know, this is the most time since my kids were little, little, little that I've spent at home. But honestly, it is also the most time that I've spent on myself. Now that my kids are grown, my oldest is in college and my younger, because I have two, uh, my son is a senior in high school. And so they don't like need of me anymore, right? I don't, I don't have to um, be at their beck and call. I don't have to worry about, you know, driving to school functions and like all the all the things. This is the most time I have spent on me in my whole entire life. My younger sibling, who is eleven years younger than I am, I was essentially like mom, right, to my. To my mom. So from the time that I was 11, I was taking care of everybody else. This is the first time I've just taken care of me. And the the break has honestly been fantastic, you know. Oh, it's it must be special. <laughs> Wedding memories. Hi Audrey, how are you? Welcome to the welcome to the live. Um I it's been lovely to just focus on what I need and what I want. I'm not sleeping the best. I'm staying up until ridiculous hours working on diamond paintings, but I'm also the happiest in that respect that I've ever been. So it's like, I don't know. Part of me is like, yeah, I, wow. Wow, did you see that? It like the fabric softener square jumped back out. <laughs> That's how bad the static is in this thing. Um. Yeah, it's it's honestly the first time that I've just done things for myself. Hi, Chantel. How are you? I'm kidding up. 
uh, Aji Sai by Margaret Morales from Diamond Art Club. Uh, so I can't be too mad about, you know, wow, the diamonds are literally just trying to jump out of the container. Stop! All right, we're going to put it in a tray first and then try to go into the storage container. It's terrible, I'm telling you. That's that's Wisconsin for you. All the static. We have, that's what doesn't make sense to me. Like, it's currently, I think it's still raining out, or at least drizzling. I don't know why I got all this static happening, but oh well. Um, so I can't be too mad about all the time that I'm, wow. You're literally just jumping into my hands everywhere. Stop! <laughs> oh my god. Jumping into my lap. Okay, they're literally trying to jump out of this thing. I don't... They're stuck on me. Maybe I should use the uh, fabric softener bead. Maybe that'll take it down immediately, too. Oh, you got some happy mail, the jaw? I got that and I have the static is. <laughs> That's terrible. Oh my sweet baby dear. <laughs> That's too funny. I can't. I can't. All right, maybe I need to maybe I need to take the the sheet of fabric softener and like rub these on the inside first because I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. Uh, I was just trying to cut down some of the static so I could get these in there. Um, so yeah, I, I can't be too mad about the time that I'm spending on myself because that's got to be good for me after just spending the last three and a half, four years, four and a half years. Too many years, put it that way, on literally everybody else but myself. I can't be too mad about that. But like I said, I'm I personally am flat broke. Like I don't like not having money. Drives me bananas. Ooh. You know, that's one thing that I can say that I don't always love about the Elizabeth Ward containers is when a diamond gets stuck in between the like, like even in this little lip thing here like in there I don't love that but could be worse I literally swept in this room just the other day and it is so bad what number was that 519 um yeah so <sighs> frustrating and then like I don't know I, a part of me a part of me wants to like Finish the application process for this other place that I interviewed. Oh, oh, I did. I did get a phone call um, from the uh, Wisconsin School for the Visually Handicapped and Blind, and they would like me to. Uh, they would like me to do an interview with them for a teaching aid position for them at the School for the Blind. Now, the reason that that's a good thing is that's in town. To like my where I live currently. Blow some air in there. All right, I'm gonna give it some hot air. Now I usually have very good success with the fabric softener squares inside of the containers, but there I just that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I just let this dry out a little bit. I don't want my. What about the freezer method? I haven't tried that. I've never tried putting them in the freezer, but I'm told it works. I've heard people have some good success with that. And then like there's people who live in the UK that don't have, like they don't do dryers, so they don't do dryer sheets. Not the UK, in Europe. I shouldn't say UK. Um, you know, because they hang dry everything. But okay. I... I I hot breathed inside of the container, so hopefully that'll do something. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. I just I'm gonna go to this other interview. The other interview for the school for the visually handicapped and 
you know, see how that goes. But I don't really know that I'm, I feel very comfortable just given, just given the nature of like, you know, not really being told what I was applying, like what I was going to interview for, like that kind of makes me a little uncomfy. And, um, and then on top of that, like, I just, you freeze and then dryer sheets. Maybe I should have done that. Um, I didn't like the fact that I was sort of like surprised. You should not be surprised about what you're going to interview for. Like I thought it was for a healthcare coordinator position and no, it was not for that. And I need to be able to afford gas and, you know, I have adult bills. I got to pay for my grown up bills. And frankly, the amount that they offered me was good if you're just just a resident assistant and you live in the town that you're you know working in. But not for commuting, not for a person who has, you know, decades of experience in the field and you know, management experience, healthcare experience, like, I don't know. And I'm not, don't get me wrong, like, at a certain point, am I allowed to be choosy and beggy? Like, when I'm beggy, am I allowed to be choosy? I mean, I feel like kind of, yeah, I'm allowed to be picky about what I end up with, you know? So I just, I didn't, I didn't like that. It's like, don't tell me I'm coming to um, interview for a healthcare and then all of a sudden you do like right turn that was left, but you know, right, <laughs> right turn. And then you have me, you know, come back as a resident assistant. I just, but as I said, the, the, my former executive director was kind of known for doing that in my life. Like he would tell me, oh, I'm working on a, at my last job. Oh, I'm working on a, on a pay increase for you and you should see something changing in October when it was March. Okay. I can, I'll wait until October. That's like six months, whatever. And then we get to October and do you think any pay increase came? No. And I, I talked to my husband about, you know, the whole situation and he's like, don't, oop, don't do it. Naomi, don't do it. You'll regret it. He's like, you know, there's, there's probably a reason that life just keeps throwing you in a different opposite direction. And maybe that's just because you need to make a complete and utter change. You need to try something you've never tried before or just go a different way. Okay, well, um, but that's not paying our bills, Dustin. It's not paying our bills. He's like, I got us covered. Just worry about worry about finding the right fit, not the right now fit. I'm like, okay, fair enough. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the, that's the job situation. Um, I don't think I'm going to, cause I still haven't even filled out an application for that job. I don't think I'm going to, I think I'm going to just conveniently forget to do it. Static guard, like the spray. Ah, oh my gosh. Like literally 16 of them just jumped out of this tray. This is insane. I have never seen this. Like, I've seen static before, but never to this level. This is nuts. <laughs> I don't know what they put in the bags before Diamond Art Club sent it to me, but, like, literally it's everywhere. It just, it just jumped everywhere. Oh, <laughs> my God. Well, um, come on. Come on. Jump into the tray. Jump into the container, not out of it. These, some of these, I'm just like half willing to just dump into a garbage. I should just try it and load up on options. Yeah, I don't know. Right now, I'm, I'm ready to try just about anything. I mean, I don't have time for the. What? Look at, look at, I move them out. I move them out of the way, and they just move right back into it. This tray is now staticky. Good lord. I think if I lose this many diamonds into the garbage, like, I'll have enough. Diamond Art Club always sends plenty. Come on, come on, come on. There, good enough. The rest of these are going in the garbage. I can't. They're everywhere on the table. <laughs> okay, let me... 
I keep trying to put them in there and they're jumping right back out. Okay, go in, go in, go in. Here we go. Yeah, I've never seen static this bad. This is the worst it's been ever. Let me try this. Try this. <laughs> yeah, let me try and there. Let's see if that helps. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. And I'm not like, I'm not like, I just give up on that altogether. Um, I'm not terribly, you know, jumpy about the fact that I have to, have to, have to work, but I've just, I'm not used to not working. Very weird for me. But as I was saying before, you know, like the, my therapist is like, you need to make a go of this YouTube thing. I think you really can do it. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to continue to do the YouTube thing while I'm not working. Cause what else have I got going on? Right. Keep putting on, keep putting out content and hopefully people will enjoy that. Invisible hands. Yeah. Something put the, Put the dryer sheet in the, you mean like take a square and like rub around the inside of the bag? Yeah, I'm going to try that too because I don't know what else to do in this situation. I'm trying to get these real like things taken care of first, the one with like three bags. I still have one more that's like a huge one. Um, And I only have this, this big one. Oh wait, you know what? You know what? No, nope, I'm a liar. Hold on a minute. Because... I have mm, second. I have I have this one. I have this one too, you guys. All right. We're gonna do some mixing and matching and it's gonna be okay. All right, let's go first. Stick that down in there. Try that. And then I got squares, so I will put a square in before I open it. We're just going to really get up close and personal with these drills with my fingers tonight, but it's okay. Um, it just makes it take longer, that's all. Whatever. Um, so... There was a, a mild concern that my son, my son was maybe not going to be graduating high school on time. Um, just there, we're only just really figuring out that there's some autism issues there that we were not, I mean, we were peripherally aware of. We hadn't done any official testing for Um and once you're figuring some other things out, like, oh, I have autism, dad has autism, maybe the kids do. So we discovered some things um, and started working on better fixes, better, uh, better fits. And so he started going to a charter school instead, well... We were doing online school, and then that was sort of kind of working better than the project-based school. The project-based school was working better than traditional school, but it seems like the charter school, and then, and then of course, COVID, and then everything was online, and that was sort of, I mean, it was better than the project-based school, but it was worse than this charter school is, and now he's... A's and B's on everything and really, really finding success in this charter school program. So it looks like I will have two graduations. Yeah. You know, is it genetic? Um, There is definitely something to be said for the genetics around autism. Um, Hold it, shake it, and then pour. Okay. I'll try that. Uh, But I... I could not tell you for for certain, for absolutely certain, as to whether or not it is a genetic trait. I believe I believe that answer is yes. 
that autism is genetic, but I don't want to say yes and then be completely incorrect. I can't get it down there. Hold on. Ooh, getting a little... Um, I don't want to say yes and then be completely wrong. So maybe somebody who knows a little bit better than I do. But I, I would be willing to venture that if dad has it and mom has it, that kid's probably going to have it too. Um, now, obviously, with myself and with Dustin, like we would be a, what would be considered a level one or, you know, high functioning. We don't require a lot of um, outside help or anything like that. Uh, my son is probably would also be considered a level one because we don't need a lot of outside assistance for him. Some accommodation, so maybe a, maybe a level two, but maybe in the middle, somewhere of the level one and the level two. Um, and my daughter would also be, she, she's been tested, my oldest, but her dad, her dad, because my ex-husband is her dad, uh, he refuses to get tested for autism. He, he thinks it's all hooey and that, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with him. And I'm going to try and just dump it now that we're a little free. Oh, that worked so much better. Okay. Okay, there we go. A couple more in there. Um, Yeah, he refuses to get any kind of testing done because there's nothing wrong with... But this is also the same, my ex-husband, the same guy that he refused to let our our kiddo go to, um, therapy when she was younger, because like for, you know, us being divorced, I was like, it's important that he feel listened to and that she can talk to somebody that isn't both of her parents and whatever. And he, you're not going to use my insurance for that. Well, okay. So he just tested and we also found out that she is autistic. So is it genetic? I, you know, yeah, my, my ex is kind of a, was delusional a little bit. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's hard to say. I would, I would venture to say that the answer to that question is yes, but I, I'm not a professional. So like, I don't want to be wrong. Um, so yeah, anyways, um, I just, yeah, I just want to I just want to do the right thing, you know? I just want to do the right thing by my kids. I want to do the right thing by me and 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 Dustin and make sure that we're all informed and aware of what's happening in life and um I'm just really I'm really relieved that, you know, the kids are able to have a little more maybe a little more help than would have been offered otherwise. My oldest doesn't really so much need accommodations in college, some accommodations. She does testing accommodation uh, because she has horrible test anxiety, like beyond, she can't concentrate at all. And so she's um, in a separate room, like she's doing it at the same time, same test, uh, same, you know, same day, all of that, but she does it in a separate room. Uh Otherwise, she just she can't focus enough with their pe people sounds tapping like she has really bad um, misophonia, which is like where you can't you just cannot manage certain sounds like tapping sounds. She can't deal with that mouth sounds of any kind. She can't deal with that. Um, anything that isn't anything that could be qualified as like a white noise sound, she, she can't do. Just cannot do man just rubbing the inside of that made a huge difference so i guess that's the that's the fix for this particular issue today um but she uh so that's why she's got a test in a completely different room just because there um she can kind of manage the you know the silence in a room but not you know you know, there's a difference between silence and silence. Like if you're in an actually silent room, there's actually more sound than you think there is, but it's usually like just the blood rushing in your ears or, you know, whatever. 
but then like a, a a silent room that has maybe like a fan going or you know you can hear computer noise or whatever like those sorts of things she just can't manage it, it's too much so they they've figured out the space where she goes to do her testing is actually like it's silent it doesn't have computer noise it doesn't have people in it it it's it's it works very well for her but you know obviously it must be doing something she's on the dean's list so we're grateful for that okay let's do another one with three is anybody else kidding up uh aji sai anybody at all because man it's got a lot of obviously a lot of blues and purples and um even some greens it, it like the colors in this are like truly my palette like that's the palette that i love 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 um okay i'm just gonna move some things out of the way i love that you can mix and match the elizabeth ward storage to kind of you know if you get yourself two or three of the ones that have various sizes in them you can kind of mix and match it to just work perfectly for whatever your project happens to be and this isn't actually the way that I would normally kit up at all. I would go, well, one of, I guess, three routes. I would either go in order, which is usually what I do, is go from one to whatever, 59, and then put them in order. And then I realized I was doing myself a disservice when I kitted up um, Grand Canal and Basilica Venice. I did that one in color order, like Roy G. Biv. Um, and then this one I'm just doing basically in like the size of the container that I need order because that's just what's going to work the best. That's what we're going with on this one. I, um, so I am also, hi, CNA budgets. How are you? Now you've got to give me a name to call you besides CNA budgets. <laughs> I mean, I'll call you CNA budgets. If that's what you want me to call you, but I'll, you know, whatever. Um, my whole issue is like my husband likes white noise, like fan. I like listening to. So what I'll do is like I'm not necessarily watching a TV or whatever, but I'll have like the volume on the TV so that I can. And I'm watching typically something I've watched over and over. And that's also an autastic trait, by the way. Um, That's what I call it. Autastic when you when you watch the same thing over and over and over again um i've done that for as long as i can remember it's almost like being read a, a bedtime story but i know all the words so it's like you know i know the script and so i could i can go to sleep because i'm not missing anything i'm not i'm not missing anything in the story hey okay you're doing good doing good the the live started with no sound, so that was a mistake. Every time I do a live, I'm going to learn something, I tell you. But, uh, yeah, so I like listening to, you know, the same sort of script or movie or whatever over and over and over again. So I'll put on a movie I've seen a gajillion times, and then I, then I can go to sleep. But my husband likes, he doesn't like that. He likes white noise. So he likes the fan. And that sort of like constant sound like that, that drives me nuts. So most of the time, I will, like while my kid is at college, I will be asleep in her room listening to, you know, whatever on television. And he's in our room sleeping with the fan on. <laughs> or we'll take turns with, which one of us is going to sleep like crap that night. And, you know, one night I'll get the, I'll get the TV or I, now I've been wearing earbuds more often so I can still hear what I want to hear, but, and he can still hear what he wants to hear. But sleeping with ear earbuds on is not super comfy or in your ears is not super comfy. So try to avoid it if I can, but he gets up stupid early and I've been staying up Stupid. I'd say stupid late, but really I'm going to bed like when he's getting up for work in the morning. <laughs> Hi, Dana. Welcome. So, yeah. 
uh, the live the live started in disaster, but it's okay. We got there. We got there. Um, these two bags. These two bags I can fit into this size, so that's what we're gonna do there. Um. Oh, and then pre pre warning here. Uh, I have doggos, and one of my doggos is a great peer. And he will bark at a squirrel fart. So if it starts barking and it becomes uncontrollable, I might mute um, temporarily just so that you don't have to listen because his barks are like supersonic. It's easier for us to just get him calmed down a little bit than to try and yell at him to be quiet because then he just thinks you're barking with him. He's like, oh, you hear it too. Uh Oh, wait, what happened? Where's my visual? Where's my visual? Are you guys getting visual? Because I'm not getting a visual. It like froze. Can you hear me? Okay, this is so weird. It's like the, the screen is frozen, but it's doing everything else. Okay, hold on a second. I may end up jumping out of the live and back in. That's so weird. I don't know why it just suddenly did that. Oh, that sucks. Okay. All right. All right. Hold on, guys. I'm I'm going to I'm going to refresh. I don't know why it did that. You biscuit. Okay, let me try this. There we go. Now we should be good. All right. Perfect. Oh, I don't know what that was about. Anyways, so yeah, if he starts flipping out, he does. He will he will bark at a squirrel fart. So it's easier for us just to get him like calmed back down than to, you know, yell at him because then yeah, he thinks that you're oh, you're barking too. He's only a year old, so he's he's learning. He's learning what it is to be a big boy doggo. Because with regards to like giant breeds, um, giant breed dogs, they are not fully like even brain developed until they're like a year and a half, two years old. They're, he's in what is uh, delightfully known as the velociraptor stage. He likes to make trouble for himself all the time. Oh, that worked so much better. Even just putting the, um, like rubbing the inside of this. Okay, let's see. 895. Okay, so it sounded to me or looked to me like a bunch of people are working on Randall Spangler, right? What else is everybody working on for 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 whips? I finished Catch Me. I started Catch Me, and I'll do a post review on that. I started Catch Me six days before finishing. It took me six days, and I was done. Bam, finished. Look at the difference. Okay, so this one... And this one and this this one, I rubbed out with the fabric softener sheet 
but these three I didn't this one definitely you can tell like these two the the drills are stuck straight to them but these ones it's actually like they're good so note to self when you're having a lot of static issues try rubbing the inside of it with the fabric softener sheet um but uh I, and then I have a border collie. She is a lovely dog, but she is anxious about everything. And I am to understand, I've never owned a border collie before. Her name is Bowie. And then Beans is my uh, Great Pyrenees. Um, oh, two, you finally calming down? Yeah, I'm sure. Uh nuzzling wolves that one's very cute very very cute <laughs> um but yeah so i have i'm just reading through shay's doing lotus and mermaid oh your mermaids and magic and the aliexpress turtle okay okay um bowie is fantastic but she is incredibly anxious. Um, I am to understand that Border Collies are typically anxious dogs. I had never owned one before her. She's a um, a Border Collie Bernese Mountain Dog mix, but, like, she has no Bernese Mountain Dog to her at all. She's small, compact like a Border Collie, looks like a Border Collie. Only difference is that her ears don't stand up like some Border Collies do. She just looks like a Border Collie. Everybody recognizes her as Border Collie the minute that they see her. Um, and she is, like, like, fireworks. She's scared of people that aren't her family. She does not like men. She doesn't like kids. She doesn't like, um, she doesn't like loud sounds. She doesn't like the vacuum. Like, she's just anxious about literally everything in life. And then um, we have a Chihuahua, which I would never have gotten her. Was a, my kids talked me into it, if I'm honest. They were like, let's get her. She's so cute. She's a Chihuahua teacup Chihuahua mix. She looks like a little Chihuahua Papillon because her, like, she's got the, like, the sprout hair that comes from out of her ears. Her ears stand straight up. Like, she's so cute. But she's a little yippy dog, and I'm not used to having, not used to having a yippy dog at all at all i don't usually do yippy dogs um i've had one other small dog besides her which was a a pomeranian but that pomeranian never barked at anything unless it was like somebody knocked on the door she'd bark if somebody knocked but other than that she was not she's not a yippy type of pomeranian which they usually are um so it's like between the three of them at any given moment, if something makes a strange sound, one of them is going to flip out. That's just what they do. And then the rest of them join in to the chorus. Right? There's somebody here. We need to let you know immediately you're in danger. So, yeah, if they start flipping out, then... I mean, my, my kids and my husband are downstairs with them, but they don't always get them quiet right away, so... I will, I will do my best not to have you guys listening to dogs barking for too long. If I can help it. Whoops. I can help it. I need seven. These colors that are in this kit are literally my favorite colors, like, on the planet. Just so you know. And, yeah, I'm ditching a few of these little extras just because I don't want to try and deal with them. Now watch me be, like, just barely short. That's okay. That's okay because I have Diamond Art Club's oops insurance. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. I wish that they would get in touch with me about when I'm starting these sneak peeks because I'm like, I want to start doing sneak peeks. I'm just waiting for word from um, their marketing person. Once she gets in touch with me, I'll know a little bit more, but right now I don't know anything and it's making me Okay, um, let's go with this one. 
I'm just like, I just want to start. I just want to get started. Oh, a skipper. Uh, yeah, skipper keys, man. They, they, or shipper key, however you say that. They like to bark. The swing. Oh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. But I knew that, Sarah, just because we were texting. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So, okay. I couldn't really tell from your picture. Is her face like, is her face going to be more visible in the picture or, um, like, are you like, are you going to have to chart it a little differently? Like, that's the only thing that I saw that I wasn't super like thrilled about with. I, I didn't buy. I'm waiting on my mystery. Get this crap, you guys. Sarah and I live about, I don't know, an hour and 15 away from each other. She got her jade already, and I'm still waiting on mine. My my truck must have got lost in the mail. I have a mystery kit that is coming, so I was going to work on my mystery kit for the jaded jamboree. And then... Now we're in like dang near the middle of April and I don't know if I want to start a mystery kit right this minute. Mysteries feel like an autumn thing, do they not? Am I wrong? Um, oh, geez, sorry, boink. So I'm a weirdo, I will tell you now. I save all my little baggies from the diamonds. I save them because when I finish and I do my kit down, I put the diamonds back into these baggies, tape them up, and then until I'm ready to, like, file them into the colors that I have in the binders for my, like, saves, I will keep them in those bags in my basement. I have a bin. And then I... Like, we'll go through and file them. But I hate the idea of all of the wasted plastic. So I just keep them in these bags afterward. I'm weird about all the plastic waste in the world. Because I care about sea turtles, y'all. I don't like waste. Hello, have coloring books will travel. Welcome, welcome. Don't blame the mail, blame UPS. Uh, yeah, and I think it is UPS actually that's moving that particular stuff. You know what's weird though? Like my my Diamond Art Club arrives in fairly short order. I mean, it's not too bad. But, you know, like with Jade's stuff anyways, you're waiting through. Okay, so I made the mistake of ordering my uh, Jaded Gem Shop kit, like literally right at the start of the Chinese New Year. And so, you know, her supplier, of course, or manufacturer or whatever, goes on vacation, just like everybody else in China does when it's the Chinese New Year. So... I had to wait, you know how she says on her website, it may be 12 weeks. I had to wait the full 12 weeks. There was no maybe. It was definitely a wait of 12 weeks. But it's not like it's her fault. I don't blame her for that. I don't blame them either. It's just, it, was, it, was, it wasn't good timing, that's all. And now I know for next time that I want to order that. I like this ecru color. Now I know for next time that... I want to order a Jada Gem Shop that I just, I need to either um, be prepared for a long waiting time or not order during the Chinese New Year like an intelligent person. Save her face till last. Yeah. 19 people. Well, now it's 18. But yeah, heck yeah. I'm excited. This is like a lot of people for a live. Um... So, I'm not sure what yet, but 
Kara, I'm going to bug her again because I'd asked her during um, my last live if Kara would be the principal painter, if she would be interested in doing an event like some sort of a collab with me. I'm, I'm thinking something maybe like winter time. Uh, and I don't really have like a, a name all the way picked out, but maybe something like Fantasy Sparkle Fest. And you would do some fantasy, whatever fantasy piece out of your stash. It'd be a no buy because gotta got to get rid of them stashes, guys. Um, you know, something fantasy themed or whatever. Unless, of course, you don't have a stash, in which case, yes, obviously, go ahead and buy your piece for it. But um, I'd like to do a collab with somebody and, and do an event. Even though I don't really participate in a lot of the events, just because I'm usually like, if I can find a piece that I'm already working on to fit an event, I will. But I don't usually, I don't usually get a a piece to fit the event. It's usually the other way around. Like if the event fits the piece, then yeah, is that cheating? I don't know. Is that considered cheating? Maybe, maybe a little, a little bit, a little bit. Wait a second. Okay. This is weird. That says three. Okay, wait. This says, can you see? 3866, right? 3866. Okay. The sticker, 3866, is like a, it's like a very light, light green. That does not look like a very, very, very light, light green. Hold on. I'm going to get my DMC color chart. Now I'm confused. Little concerned. Little, little, little nervous. Little nervous. I don't want to, I don't want to have the wrong piece, like the wrong color. That's by number, okay. Ultra very light mocha. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good. I don't know why it's that color on the sticker. That's bizarre. But I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> I'm glad we're okay. All right. But like, if you could see this color, it's like a funky greenish color and I didn't want to be wrong put the wrong color in the bag or in the thing. Cause I've, I've had plenty, not, not from diamond art club, but I've had uh, times where I've gotten the whole wrong color from a company. And then I started putting it on the piece and I'm like, this just looks weird. I don't know why it looks weird like this. And then, yeah, it was wrong. It was totally wrong. Seasonal theming. Okay. Okay. And you know, that's the thing too. I do not have, I do not have any, um, like seasonally themed things necessarily. Like I don't have anything that's specifically Halloween or specifically Christmas or whatever. I don't have anything like that. And somebody was telling me that, you know, because I was talking about doing a DP along on Reddit because that's kind of the community where I hang out on Facebook. So I want to be friends on Facebook. Um, I do Reddit and they were talking about, well, what about doing like a Christmas in July? Well, I don't have a Christmas piece, any kind of Christmas piece. So it'd be hard for me to do a Christmas in July because I just don't have anything that would fit that theme. Like, but you guys can do that. You guys can have fun doing that. Um, and then, and then, uh, whoop. yeah, so I'm going to, uh-oh, see, now I hate when that happens. Just too many. Okay, so we're going to save this bag, because that's what I do. We will save this bag. I just had just a little too much. Just a little too much. 
Because I mean, I could, I haven't put the sticker on. I could put it in a large one. All right, we'll put it in a large one. That's what we're going to do. Um, so yeah, I, I want to do an event. I want to run an event, but I don't know what. And that's the other thing too. Like I would need, I would need Kara or somebody else, one of the, you know, other sneak peekers to help me out because I'm not as well connected in the community. Like, I, oh, shh, Nikes. <laughs> oh my God. All right, hold on. Where is my... Where's the tray? Okay, fine. We'll use this tray. Okay. Cat proof trays. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would need I would need somebody else. Because I'm not as, com you know, connected in the community as, like, Kara would be or, you know, somebody else. I'd asked around, but a lot of the other, um, like, even sneak peekers either didn't respond. They get busy lives, whatever. Or, you know, they, they don't do events anymore or they're just, you know, not interested. And that's okay. Not mad about it. Not mad about it. Um... But I like I like event things. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. I just I don't know. I I'm a weirdo like that. Like I don't I don't know what I would do with it. It would at least the things that I have diamond painted, I would I would hang up in my house. 100 percent. Even even the weird ones like the Ah Real Monsters one. I would hang that up in my house somewhere just for funsies. But like a Christmas or a themed thing would really not fit. I mean, my house is really random. Like the logo, my logo, the House of Miscellanea logo. The reason that that has the things in it that it does, my son, my son did that piece. That's his, that's his um, art. And everything that in there in the logo, it's supposed to be a sensory bottle. And... Everything that's in that sensory bottle is representative of something that's in my house. Like there's a, um, I think there's still a Ouija board placard because I collect Ouija boards. It's a weird thing to collect, but I collect Ouija boards. Um, and then there's something that like an animal that represents each one of my, my kids and my husband. Uh, Jesus, I don't think this was a wise idea. Nike, man. I can't win. Okay. I'm going to do this a little at a time. Um, but yeah, so in that logo, there's lots of things that represent my kids or my family or things in my house. And so while, yes, random stuff will fit the the theme in my house, because there's the if the theme is anything, it's random. But things of like a holiday nature, not so much. Not so much. I don't think it would fit. Yeah, a kit. Yeah, I don't want. And I that, that I don't want to get. I don't want to get a kit. I'm gonna regret because I I have so many freaking kits as it is. I don't need to. I don't need to get another that I'm never gonna do. You know. Reading comments. Too many Christmas kits. Okay. Well, then Dana, you can send me a Christmas kit. <laughs> So I can do for Christmas in July. You know what I want? I'm trying to do a conversion. I'm trying to do a double-sided adhesive to pour glue conversion, but I don't have any double-sided adhesive kits. And even like uh Huacan, Huacan, however you say that business name, H-U-A-C-A-N on AliExpress, they're not, they're like phasing out double-sided adhesive because so many people know that if they request poured glue from them that they'll give them poured glue and so they um they pretty much stop doing double-sided adhesive because they know that people are going to request the poured glue so i can't even get a double-sided adhesive one from that this this tray this tray this is a cat proof tray 
The one that I'm usually using, like my chats though, is hold on, I gotta empty it out. It's the it's the same. It's cat proof tray, this green one, but um it's the like what does she call it? The fine loaf from cat proof trays. Um, I like this one just I like the I like the width of it. I like the like the sides on it. I like that it's a soft silk plastic. I don't like the harder plastic 3D trays. Um, and then this is also cat proof trays. This one is I don't remember the name and I can't look at it because I can't flip it over right now, but I'll look at it. I don't maybe that one doesn't have the insignia on the back. I think it was a misprint. I remember correctly but she also does her kitten loaf which is this itty bitty like perfect for confetti you know you're not obviously gonna do too many in this one like this would be one if you have a really like a jaded gem shop where you're gonna do a lot of confetti because it's so teeny but this is the myrmacorn silk that one is the Starlight Silver, and it's got kind of like a pinkish sheen to it. Um, and then the green one is the Starlight, this is the Starlight Earth. I love cat proof trays. She's phasing them out. Okay, I might have to look into that. Sparkle Queen. Um, cause yeah, you know, I do a conversion. I want to take a piece and then I want to get the double, double-sided adhesive off of it and then convert it into a poured glue for one of my, um, for the YouTube. But I'm like, if anybody's got a double-sided adhesive or know where I can get one. <laughs> I also like that. The um the ridges in it are they're nice and tall, but they're not so tall that your drills get stuck in there. Cause I've had that issue with a lot of 3D printed trays where you're like you put your drills in it and then like after you've shaken it and you're trying to get them out of there, they're just like stuck. But hers aren't so tall that they get stuck, which I enjoy. Okay, what is this? 826 gonna take me forever you guys hope some of you are bored and feel like sticking around this might take some time um fifty nine colors man that's crazy crazy all right let's see I have any more bags in here I do for fairy dust that's just a batter bag scooch everything over here I cannot tell you how like silly excited I am about doing this particular artwork keep dozing off no, no dozing off. As long as you're not like driving, don't don't doze and drive. Did you um? Did you already finish taking your uh test that you needed to take? That all done and over with. Okay. I know you were a little. You were worried about that. You know, I I read every comment on my YouTube um, videos. I respond to every comment. Um, and one that I've been seeing a lot lately that really made me happy is people um, saying thank you for the way that I like introduce myself by saying. What's up, guys, gals, and non-binary pals? And that really, that ma it makes me both happy that people are appreciative of that. That's not why I say it. Um, 
my uh, I want people to feel like this is a inclusive and safe space for them. Um, my my son is transgendered and I would like to think that there is also a, a space where he is visible and so that's kind of why I included it is because you know I have I have some people in my life that are non-binary or you know different etc what's up diamond nana um driving test is done four days of academy Woo! woof all right You can do it, Kate. You can do it. I have faith in you. Um, but yeah, that's I wanted to make sure that that was included in my hello to people because I I allow every type of person in my life. I'm the you know I celebrate diversity and difference, and so it was just a comment that kept coming up, and I was like, oh my goodness. Well, you're welcome, but that's not why I do it. Um, this one. Okay, so I'm into these like thick bags that sometimes the one bag will fit in these okay, and then sometimes it's like a mistake to try. But we're gonna see this if this one works. But I just thought it was nice to see that comment and a and a thank you that wasn't even really necessary, but I was grateful for that. You know. YouTube's new algorithm, right? It's kind of, uh, I'm going to scooch it back this way a little bit. There, just so you can see a little more. Um, YouTube's like new algorithm is really weird. Uh, I, I both like it and I'm scared of it at the same time. They want, they want content creators to put out content that people want to see, right? So, they base all of their um, current their current research on view time. So, like, let's say you really want to support a uh, new YouTube YouTuber named Naomi from House of Miscellanea. I'm just kidding. Um, you want to support a YouTuber, uh, and you think that you're doing so by like leaving hi Teresa um, by leaving a. Uh, a like or a comment or whatever and you think like I'm helping them out by doing this no you're helping them out by watching so if you weren't aware like that's how YouTube is doing their um algorithm now that's what they're doing because they want to see that people are putting out quality content not just you know you can you can gain I did not all right I knew it I guess I knew peripherally that you could do it I was not aware that people would would buy like subscribers or would buy likes either a to like become monetized or b to like game the system and get more pay or whatever and because you can game the system on likes or um subscribers they're trying to find a new way to like judge people's content and whether or not it's worth showing that content to people and that's how they're doing it is via like watch time so if you really want to help out us your you know whoever your favorite youtuber is watch the whole thing even if you just leave whatever you're watching going while you're you know cooking or something just leave the playlist going or what have you it also um is basing the algorithm off of repeat watchers. So like people who come back to your channel to watch your content and it will show your content to new people if it sees returning people coming back. So like, you know, in some ways it's really helping people. And then in some ways it's really hurting people because, you know, if you decide within the first few seconds of a video, you're like, Matt's not for me and you click off of that video, now all of a sudden that person that you were watching, it gives their algorithm kind of a, not a down vote exactly, but it, it sort of, um, it sort of pings it. Like people don't like this content. People don't like this content. They're clicking away from it, especially in the first 30 seconds. It's like, oh, they don't like you at all. All right, well, we're not going to show you to more people because people don't like you. Um, 
So yeah, I don't, if you weren't aware, that's how they do that. So if you can, you know, try and watch and all the way through. Or, I mean, if I guess if you really wanted to mess somebody up, you could go and start their videos and then click away immediately. <laughs> hmm. All right, so you're going on a cruise. And I remember putting on your video, Diamond Nana, that I am terrified of large bodies of water. I can't do it. I can't do it. My mom was scared of large bodies of water. I'm scared of large bodies. I, it, it's... I don't know that it's a drowning thing so much as it is like, okay, if I'm stranded out in the middle of the ocean, I don't trust that I'd be able to swim or float long enough to get myself to safety. So there's that. Um, yeah, I just no no cruises for me personally. But packing is fun. I like packing. Is that weird? I like to pack for a trip, but I don't like going on trips. Not not in planes, not in boats. I mean, cars are okay, but I don't really love traveling in the car if I don't have to. Shorter trips, like four and five hours is good. Anything longer than that in a car is just torturous to me. So it's probably good that I really like the state that I live in because I don't have to leave it. <laughs> Although I do want to do some traveling, you know, like I've, I haven't been abroad since I was very, very little. I don't remember any part of being abroad when I was little, so would like to go abroad at some point. But again, that means going in a plane, and I don't really love the idea of that. <laughs> Just really big sissy is what it is, you guys. A big old sissy. Um, ooh, you're kind of a fat one. I think you'll be okay. Maybe. We'll find out. You never feel like you're on water? Well, what about those people that are always, like, barfing all the time? Is that just, like, early in the early in the trip when, like, you're trying to get out of the port and things are like, wee? I was looking at <clears throat> some of the... I mean, winter probably sucks worse than Wisconsin winter because you're right on the ocean. Um... You know, I'm like watching some commercials for like carnival cruises or whatever. And that's like a that's like a literal neighborhood block on a boat. That just doesn't seem safe. Didn't work out well for the Titanic. Yikes, man. Yeah, and then Florida summers, I don't miss Florida summers at all. Uh Virginia summers are not quite as bad as as florida ones but they're they're not awesome i'll tell you that oh now we got some static again dang it we were doing so good patches bracelets and zofran well whatever you gotta do you know get yourself prepared I'd probably be one of those poor, unfortunate buggers who are just barfing the whole trip. No fun. But yeah, I would assume maybe when you're out in the, or if the water is really, like, choppy. It would be really cool, though, to see, like, the, 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 the night sky with, like, literally no light pollution. And aren't you on shore basically every other day on a cruise? Like, they... You have options to go onto shore basically every other day, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. That scares the that scares the heebies and the jeebies out of me. Three, three, four, seven. So the last time, <clears throat> excuse me, the last time that I kitted something up, I started working on it immediately. And then I um, finished it six days later, and that was Catch Me. I just finished Catch Me, but I only kitted it up like six days earlier. So I don't think I'm going to be able to finish this one in that time. Uh, Aji Sai is a... Uh, what is she? A 65 by 95? She's a big one. 
She is a big one. Got green everywhere. Oh yeah, before hurricane season, I would not want to be messing around with that. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. No way. When I went, <clears throat> excuse me, when I went to uh, L.A. to visit a friend, it was like probably 10 years ago now. I went on a flight and I, OK, this will tell you how long ago it was. I went on a flight on JetBlue. And I still existed then. So long time ago. And I was really, really scared. The. um the flight attendants that were on that flight, they could tell I was like just mortified. I was terrified. And they're like, well, come to the back with us. I'm like, okay, go to the back with them, you know, their little area. And they're just talking to me. They're like, okay, now do me a favor. Just close your eyes for a minute. I'm like, okay. They're like, all right. Now uh, touch your, touch your finger to your nose. I was like, okay, touch my finger to my nose. Like, what am I doing? Um, they're like, all right, now bend down and touch your toes. I'm like, okay. They're like, now stand up on, you know, hop on one foot. And so I hop on one foot and they're like, okay, now see, you just hopped on one foot at 36,000 feet and you, and you lived, you're fine. <laughs> it's like, oh, all right. Yeah, when you put it that way, no, I'm still terrified. <clears throat> but it was fun. Leaving out of Miami. Now, do you live near Miami or do you, are you like flying to Miami and then, and then like leaving port or how does that work? I'm curious. I'm nosy really is what it is. I'm nosy. Curious. Yes. But nosy also. Um, but yeah, like really the only trips that I've taken in the last decade really have been just in my home state like driving but there's a lot to see in wisconsin a lot to see in wisconsin i don't know why i decided to go with this really huge container for this one but i'm i'm really running out of bags that have a lot in them so it should be fine So I was trying to figure out, like, answering my, to myself the, the question of, like, how much content is too much content, okay? Because I have content planned for forever, but what I'm nervous about is, like, putting out so much content that people are like, oh, God, I don't, is this girl still putting stuff out? Like, geez, enough. So is it too much to like to try and put out something new every day if I have the time to do that? Because then, you know, like obviously if I get a job or whatever, I would I would dial it back to like three times a week or whatever. But is it too much like when with your like favorite YouTubers or whatever, if they were to put out content every day, would that be a good thing to you or would that be a bad thing? And I'm not talking like the same exact stuff, like I'm going to do six days of a whip and chat or something like that. I'm talking like putting up, you know, like one day is a whip and chat, one day is a unboxing or a early look, or one day is a, um, a tutorial, one day is a post review, you know, that sort of thing. What would you what would you think if your like favorite YouTuber was to do something like that? Would you be thrilled? Would you be like, eh, save it? Yikes, man. A plane crash. Yeesh. Mm -mm. No, thank you. No, thank you. That's what I'm scared of. Like, I'm going to end up in a freaking plane crash somewhere in the middle of nowhere. You know what it was? I know what it was. It was the movie Castaway. It was the movie Castaway with Tom Hanks. They really did the crash scene so real. They didn't need to do that. Like, even to the extent that, like, 
that scene where Tom, like they're plummeting toward the ocean and Tom Hanks's face is like stretched back like he's skydiving. They didn't need to do that. They just really didn't need to do that. And I don't have a ball to make my best friend. So just stay off of planes. You love them, the more the better. Okay. And Laura says I would watch them. Because, I mean, I feel like I personally would watch them. Like, if, if Katie put out, from Diamonds and Washi, put out content every day. If Kara, principal painter, put out content every day. I'd be like, done. Done and done and done. Let's go. You loved that movie? All right. I don't know if we can be friends anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I trust you anymore. You little crazy person. It was just too real. It was way too real. I, okay, for the record, 3818 is probably my favorite color of green, of any green, except for maybe, oh, where is it? Maybe it's already up here. Except for, no, not 895. Where's that? Maybe it's 987. I do, I do enjoy this color of green. It doesn't read as well on, like, camera. Like, that kind of... It almost has a sagey vibe to it, but this... It's like Kelly Green is my favorite, favorite color of green. Green is my favorite color, hands down, anyways. Well, don't watch it if, uh, Dana, if you are, like, freaked out by plane crashes because it... Like, the plane crash in that movie is way beyond realistic. And it's within the first, you know, what, half hour of that movie? I mean, Tom Hanks is wonderful. I love Tom Hanks. I don't love plane, cra plane crashes. That's not my favorite thing in the whole world. Um, what if I had... No. Nope. That's the one thing that's a little tricky with the Elizabeth Ward containers is finding the right, like, setup again <laughs> to fit them all back in here. Um... And I can probably start using whoop, the more big ones. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just never really cared for a, never really cared for a movie with realistic plane crashes, I guess. All right, let's go with this one. I got an email from Art Dot. Uh, what was it day before yesterday? And they asked me to pick out some items on their website so I can do a review. And the first thing I grabbed up, you're darn right, is um, you know that zip up, uh, the zip up storage container. It's like it's got the um the vials in it, like with the screw on tops and it comes in like a carrying case sort of deal. Oh, heck yeah. I was like, like for one, um, I wanted one of their diamond paintings too, because I've never done one of their diamond paintings. I got the, the day of the dead advanced one. So I'm excited about that. And then a small light pad. Because the light pad that I have, I got from, I don't know, some cheap Amazon company. And the port where you put, uh, plug it in is already shorted. And I only got it like a year ago. So they're going to send me some stuff. Yeah. And I like, honestly, I know there's some people who don't like them. But I really like these small Tic Tac containers now not when i've got a million colors to you know like uh when i have something that has to fit like this size no i don't like the tic tac containers because it takes up like 14 of them but when it comes to you know a smaller like smaller kits fine but not something with huge amounts of diamonds yeah the, uh, the zip up container I don't have any of those, but you're darn right. I was like, yes, I would like that. You could send that to me. The A2. I got an, I think I got an A3 
three. I got the smallest, whatever the smallest one was. Um, Cause I don't, when I'm working on a square, I'm not working on a square. That's like, you know, the size of this, I'm just working on a small square. So I figured I didn't need a light pad that was like really huge because of that. Sorry, I'm just trying to trying to see if I can save the littler containers, these littler ones for the diamonds that have way less in them. I'm going to use these bigger ones even though even though they won't be as full. So I'm going to see if I can kit this up without using the, the little one and then just use the two Elizabeth Ward containers together because um, even though I don't, I don't have, like some of these are being the, in the other one. I have like just as like extras for um, Grand Canal and Basilica Venice. So these are out of, one of the art dot or art dot the Elizabeth Ward containers. And so it won't be full when I'm done, if that makes sense, what I all just said. Caught on fire? I'm sorry. What? Was it a was it an art dot one or another brand? Because I know Nana, Diamond Nana, you have um, you have an affiliate affiliation with Timu, right? They send you stuff for free. I don't, I mean, no, no offense meant at all. And you do whatever you do. And I'm not like nothing against unlicensed stuff for other people. I just personally don't buy them. Um, I don't buy unlicensed stuff. It's just a personal preference. and to each their own, but if I remember correctly, you work with Timu, right? Yeah, sleep, girl. Go get some sleep. Um, Tomorrow, I think I set it for like 4.30 or something like that. I have a new video coming out for uh, an unboxing for a new to me and new company. Um, so check out that unboxing tomorrow and then I will have the uh unboxing for this kit will probably be up on Saturday I, I'm doing a twofer so go get you some sleep Kate um but yeah so was it a Timu or an art dot light pad art dot <clears throat> yikes that's scary I'm glad you're okay Lord. Everything you get is public domain. Oh, that's good at least. Cuz I know like I'm not, you know, honestly, Timu and uh AliExpress, I accidentally bought a stolen piece of artwork, which is also why I don't purchase from them any like through AliExpress anymore. <clears throat> it was a Christine Karen piece and I didn't real I have it's in my stash video. And I sent her some money because I felt bad. I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't know. It was just really pretty. I was like, oh, but that was really before I knew better about a lot of things. Um, so I it won't be featured on my, you know, on my channel. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna agree on it. I'm just it's gonna be swept quietly under the rug and I'll do the piece, but you know, probably not for some time. Um, like AI artwork and things like that. It's not really my style for the most part. doesn't mean I won't work on a, a, an AI piece or whatever, like a fully AI piece. And the nice thing about it is it doesn't belong to anybody, but it also like, you know, kind of takes, takes jobs away from artists. So I got a, I got an artist at home. I got to think about my son. Um, we're going to go on a big one again. And actually not that one. I'm going to go with the fairy dust. Am I? Am I though? Yeah. 
It's a little random. See what it fits because I'm gonna have to fit this in somewhere. I end up putting that with the uh, in the other one. So the how is it coming? How is Grand Canal coming along? Okay, let me go back a little bit. Do 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 do. Candice, I can gauge the size container by the size of the bag. Yeah, so generally I have been doing that, but I'm trying to use up these larger-ish ones. Um, like my pretty much my whole other container is these larger sized ones, but I want to get into these smaller ones, and I don't want to put like a bag that has, you know, like 35 diamonds in it into one of these huge ones. So I'm just trying to use these up with the bigger bags first. Yeah, that's that's my thought process around that. Is it tedious and silly? Yes, it is tedious and silly. So I'm just trying to use these bigger ones up on ones with more diamonds in the bag. Otherwise, I'm sure they'll all fit in these smaller ones. It's, it's a little bit mamby-pamby because um, right now I have like three zombied, um, well, really four zombied Elizabeth Ward containers because I've kind of mixed and matched them up with other so that they fit the pieces and yeah. So I'm just kind of working with the remnants of what I have left from two, well, one and three quarters of, an, of two Elizabeth Ward containers or uh, thingies and yeah, so I'm just trying to just trying to figure out what should go where because I still have three. There's my dog. Um, three of these, and I I probably won't be using these three because I don't have any more that size to put in there. So these will get set aside for now. But yeah. I'm just being a little extra, really, is what it is. All right. I'm going to put my berry dusts in a different thingy boo. All right. So this one will fit in here. That, and once you've mixed them up, like mixed the Elizabeth Ward containers around, Trying to get them to fit into rows again is a little tricky when you're not putting them by size and, and whatever in the, yeah. I really do like the Elizabeth Ward containers, though. These are Elizabeth Ward containers that I got from uh, AliExpress. What's up, my big dog? What are you doing in here? Did everybody go to bed and they sent you up to me? You big surly boy. My my Pyrenees is in here with me. And the way he goes. He's got this habit, and I don't know. I know somebody else said that they have a... a thank you, Diamond Nana. Um, somebody else had mentioned that they also have a peer. Um, does yours also like to go into the bathtub, an empty bathtub, and then, like, pretend to dig around in there? Like, lay on their side and then dig? Because... <laughs> Because he does that. His favorite place in the whole world is our bathtub. Now, he will not take baths. He will not take a bath. He will go and lay in the dirty ass river. Sorry, pardon my French. He will go and lay in the river. He will go in a dirty creek. He will go into a horse trough full of disgusting water. But if I try to give him a bath, he squeals like he's on fire. If I give him like a concerted bath, I can't take him to a group. He won't, he won't have it. He won't have it. Just will not. But he'll go lay in something disgusting and dirty as long as it's wet. Um, but he does. He likes to lay in the bathtub and then on his side and like he'll, he'll scratch on the sides of the bathtub. Oh, the trays on the side that are holding my unopened drills. Oh, these? 
I picked these up at the dollar tree or the the dollar tree for a buck 25. Why I like them is they have like a they have a rubber, like feet on them. They have rubberized feet so they don't slide. And then they have a rubberized bottom in them so stuff that's in them doesn't slide. And I picked up like I don't know. They're called storage essentials. And I just, I got them from the Dollar Tree for a buck 25. I was wondering what you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, the Dollar Tree. Um, and then they also have a, um, a much smaller version where it's plastic. Uh, oh, there they are. Hold on. Because if I'm working on a kit that is already like pre ziploc bag for me, I don't like to take them out of the Ziplocs and then kit them up. That's just a whole ass waste of time. So I got these ones also from the Dollar Tree, but these are like really flimsy, like really thin plastic, but they work really well for like paint gem pieces or a piece that only has like you know, a 25, you know, baggy thing from, you know, AliExpress or Timu or whatever. Um, so they're, but see, like next to the size, they're really small. So this one works really well for just itty bitty stuff. But yeah, I got these at the Dollar Tree. Um, they have some, you know, honestly, for being a buck, they've got some really decent storage stuff. Um, even my, uh, now it's not airtight or anything, but what I'll usually do is I have these things too. They're just real cheap plastic that I got at Dollar Tree. And I'll put things like my empty bags of bags, like, like these, these things. I'll put these in there until I'm done with my pieces. And then I know where to find them. They're in this thing. And these things fit perfectly inside of those like sorry those three stackers that you can get from walmart the sterlite like drawers because i have a three stacker of drawers i should at some point honestly do a video on like how i organize my stuff very 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 inexpensively um these these things here they are the exact almost the exact length of one of those Sterlite drawers. So you could line these up inside of those Sterlite drawers with whatever you wanted. And then they stack on each other. So you could do, um, because you know, the the height of the Sterlite drawer, you could stack like two or three of these on top of each other if you work out of baggies specifically. Just a thought. Just a thought. And and super cheap. Super, super cheap. All right, let me get these out of the way. Nope. Yeah, I was wondering what... I thought you were talking about, like, my my diamond painting trays. So, sorry for the confusion. Please do a video. Okay, I will. Even my... Um, what I used to do before I got wise and stopped opening up all of my diamond paintings from Diamond Art Club because I never knew whether I was going to de-stash something. And not that most people who buy Diamond Art Club care if they're separate and you don't have a box necessarily. Some people do. So I was, for the longest time, separating my um, my paintings from the, you know, from the diamonds and the supplies, right? Well... I got myself a massive size portfolio bag that fits every one of the biggest things that I've got going on in it. And um, so that they could, I could lay them flat under my bed. If you want it to stand up though, you have to get like, I got these, um, you know, those, um, it's like a, you use them for science fair projects. It's like a, a presentation board. It's cardboard and it opens up. It's like it's got two pieces and they open and then it's like three. Well, 
I got um a bu I got a few of those so that I could have separators inside of it. So I knew like this is my diamond art club, this is my diamond dots. I'm a little way too organized. It's a little scary. Um but having those presentation boards in there also allows the portfolio bag to stand up so I can have it standing up against a wall or I can have it flat under my bed. Um, yeah, I got stuff all over the house. Yeah. You know, um, thank you. Yeah. Presentation boards. Uh, so for the longest time, I just kind of had everything everywhere. And then I'm like, no, I even got myself a labeler, like one of those little brother um, printable, like it prints right out of the labeler. I got one of those because I was just so tired of everything being everywhere in my house. And I'm sure my, this color of green is the other one. It looks black, but it's actually like a really dark green. That's my other favorite color of green. Um, you know, I'm sure it was driving my husband nuts to have my stuff everywhere. Show the portfolio bag. Okay, I got it, that one from Amazon, and I know they still sell them on there. It's like a Nick Pro, N-I-C-P-R-O, Nick Pro presentation bag. It It's spendy. It's a little spendy, but it's it was worth it. The portfolio bag was totally worth it, especially if you have light, larger diamond art club pieces because you can put your finished pieces in there you can put your the other thing you should pick up while you are at the dollar tree um they have bags of oh, so these come in a set of four i think on the handle and it's rubber on the tip part these come in four, and I think this size comes in six. I use them for everything. These things I use when I want to attach my diamond painting to the table so it's not sliding around on me. And because it's rubberized, it's not going to damage it. These ones I use for, like, if I'm hanging my, my paintings up on a hanger uh, or whatever. Like, I use these things, or these ones, too, work for that, hanging them on a hanger. Um, I use these rubberized clips for like everything. A dollar for four of these and a dollar, well, dollar twenty-five and a dollar twenty-five for six of these ones. Or it was eight. One of the two. I picked up a bunch of good stuff at the Dollar Tree. I was surprised with all kinds of good stuff that I found. Uh oh. What color was that? Must be five. Can I put the bag away before I looked at the number? Whoopsie poopsie. Yeah, that's the darkest green on here, so it's got to be this one. Get me all distracted and I'm going to get lost. I know, right? My, da <laughs> My daughter. She's like, well, you have until the end of May, Mom. I was like, okay. I'll do my best. Everything's down. Like, my storage areas are downstairs, but I keep, like most of my stuff up here with me because like what else am I gonna do with it at least I told her at least I didn't turn it into like an exercise room <laughs> 500 it was 500 but you were close uh so yeah I was like I didn't turn it into like a you know workout room although when she does find her own apartment and does you know move her stuff out this is 100% going to be my craft room. It'll be like a, it'll be a dual thing. My husband is, uh, at least right now anyways, totally obsessed with um, uh, succulents. He's got a shelf in our room that has like lights up underneath it, like grow lights, um, because he's got every kind of weird succulent you can think of. He's got one that's called thing. Oh, don't ask me. I don't know. Um, he's got another that's like uh, just the, a brain, but he keeps it in this pot that has faces on all sides of it. And it looks like a brain sticking out of its head. It's crazy looking. Um, yeah, he's that's his new obsession is uh, succulents. <laughs> so 
it'll probably turn into a craft room slash like not greenhouse, but you know, greenhouse sort of deal for his succulents because it has both a south and an east facing window. And he likes that. Just so you guys know, I'm going to be on here until I finish doing this. So if you want to stick around for a bunch of hours with me, you are more than welcome. I'm just going to do it until I'm done. Why not? Also, thank you goes out to, um, oh, Lord, Cat uh, because, or no, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, Rachel, Rachel Ray, Rachel Ray and I, I was comment on her unboxing, like her sneak peek of Ajisai. And I was like, oh, I would have that unboxed on a live like immediately. Well, when she got hers yesterday, she did a live on a uh, kitten chat. And I was like, see, see, that's what I would have done. Just immediately done. So we stole each other's idea. <laughs> Um, here's another good one. Your niece lives where in Wisconsin? Wisconsin is a beautiful state. I do have to say, I, um, I love living here. It's, it has every season, which I love. We have a winter, a spring, a summer, and a fall, all proper from each other. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, occasionally our winters last nine months. That's not an exaggeration. Sometimes it snows from October to May. Not always. Not lately. Not since, you know, global warming. But, um, but it's got every kind of season. Oh, see, okay. Yeah, it would definitely, definitely fit your 70 by 90. I fit um, Grand Canal and Basilica Venice in that, and that's uh, largest part is 105 centimeters. Sir Succulent. <laughs> it works for me. Cat totally works for me. He can be Sir Succulent all day. <laughs> He'd accept that. He would accept that. Um, but yeah, it, it's money. That Nick pro bag is money, but it's, it's a good one and it will fit anything that you put in it. The, um, so like I said, presentation boards in it and the presentation boards fit it like perfectly. And then what I'll do is I take those clips I showed you, like either the thick ones or the little ones. And then if I don't want them to like, uh, if I'm standing it upright, I will actually clip the paintings to those presentation boards upright so that they're not like curling on the bottom or whatever. Um, yeah, I've got all kinds of tips and tricks with that, but it's it's definitely money, but it is money that I felt was well spent for getting my diamond paintings that were open, you know, not being in rolls because I don't like them being rolled up. But yeah, I just, uh, I obviously am not in any rush to have my daughter move out or whatever, but definitely going to be taking this room over when she's gone. It will be my craft room. And then I guess I'll let my husband put some plants in the window. If he has to. Um, let's see. Looking for another bag that's kind of full-ish. Oh, okay, Monroe. That's actually not far from me. That's about 40, 40 minutes. Um, what is that direction? That's west. It's 40 minutes west of me. That is a beautiful area, Monroe. And they have, um, uh, what is it? Um... Spotted Cow comes from, I don't drink, but New Glarus. They have New Glarus right nearby. And Monroe is actually like just south of the Spring Green area, which is the Wisconsin desert. That's known as like our desert. 
it's almost like a high desert, the plant life that's there, the, um, the way that the, um, the real sandy dirt meets the bluffs and stuff like that. Like that's sort of our desert. It's actually called the Wisconsin desert. Oddly enough, it doesn't look like a desert when you're in it, maybe a high desert, but, um, spring green is absolutely beautiful. New Glarus looks like something out of the Lord of the Rings. Monroe area is the same broadhead, all that. So she lives in a really beautiful spot in Wisconsin. I am jealous. I live in a kind of a crappy little town in like South Central Wisconsin. It's kind of like the armpit of Wisconsin. I live like we um we refer to it as Chainsville, but it's got like we're in the I-90 corridor. Um so anybody who's traveled traveling through my town, not to stop. Like there's nothing here worth stopping for. They just keep going. Um, but if they're on their way to Madison or Milwaukee and they're coming into Wisconsin, they're they're coming in through where I live. And so we get a lot of out-of-state traffic, but not out-of-state traffic that stops in. They don't want to spend their money here. They just want to drive through. Which is fine. And then GM closed down in the town that I live in, and it's just a mess. It's a mess. I mean, it's recovering now, but okay, like, for instance, the river, I live probably, mm, I would say six blocks from the river on this side. And then behind me, I live three blocks from the river. We live like right in a bend of the river. Well, down this way, uh, the river was um, a dumping ground essentially for General Motors. And the river was disgusting, polluted. We had no wildlife down there. The, the only fish you'd see in the river were carp and probably three eyed carp, um, just garbage fish. And uh, so, you know, we, we didn't dare fish or eat fish out of our river. Well, now that General Motors has been gone for um, been a long time since they closed, uh, the river is finally starting to, like, mend itself. And we have, well, for one, in the city that I live in, we have three nesting pairs of bald eagles in the city limits. I can walk two miles from my house because... Nah, not even two miles, a mile, a mile from my house down the river. And there's a nesting pair of bald eagles there. Um, and then north side, south side, and west side of town all has a nesting pair of bald eagles. And then on that same river where GM used to be is uh, a bunch of, we get a, a huge flock of pelicans that stop by every year and they stay from March until usually September and then they leave in September but it's finally like we have wildlife and we have, have like an area down there uh yeah I'm telling you there's probably three there was probably three eyed fish in there like the Simpsons um oops sorry bumped you uh so like finally recovering they they were gonna build like a like a businessman's park or whatever businesses businessman's park. They were going to do a bunch of essentially uh, like office buildings or whatever on the site where GM used to be in town. And they started to raise the parking lot from general motors and the area where the building was like the buildings were. And so they started excavating. They were trying to get the concrete up so that they could rebuild the, you know, put in, in, dirt and grass and whatever. Well, they stopped the project immediately because they started to create one part of the parking lot and discovered that there were barrels, like 50 gallon drums of paint that they had buried, that General Motors had buried underground, obviously seeping into the, the dirt and polluting everything around it. They have since started to excavate those. 
I'm I'm assuming that they'll probably end up um donating the the barrels of paint to um like probably like I don't not not Smithsonian but some museum because it will have uh fordite in those barrels which is when the paint I don't if you know what I'm talking about Fordite is not a stone. It's actually like petrified paint that they take, they slice it, and then they polish it. And it's like layers and layers and layers and layers of different colored paint that it essentially turns to stone. And they call it Fordite, like Ford, General Motors Ford. Um, well, I'm assuming that it'll probably be donated either to a geological society or to a museum or something like that once they've dug it all up because it was gallons and gallons and gallons of dead paint that they buried. Um, so real eco-conscious they were. But it's finally, finally starting to recover um, the, the wildlife is, we have beavers. I hadn't seen a beaver in our river ever when I lived here. It was from the time that I've lived here. And now we've got beavers going up and down the river. We've got hens, bald eagles that are hunting on our river. I mean, lots of Canadian geese, but that's going to happen. There's flocks of Canadian geese that will just never leave. Why should they? They have fish. They have essentially a we're the the city of parks and so um there's so much area for them to basically nest and live in okay so that one's good and this is what i've got left of this particular elizabeth ward container and i don't think i'm gonna fit all of these but what i was thinking is the tic tac containers that i take out of the art dot one i can line up in here Maybe, I don't know, something like that. These are real big ones too. Dang it. I don't need them. Maybe I don't want to put them in this. I think I'm just going to leave that alone. And then I'm going to, sorry, bump you up. I'm going to put the rest in here. These will be extra these because these are my fairy dust i'm gonna put my fairy dust and my you know what i'll put these into into uh elizabeth ward oh, I'll for these. there we'll go like that it will bother me if i don't so i'm just gonna go ahead and do it <laughs> GM, I hope so too. But I don't think that they will charge them millions for all the damage that they've done. But that lot where GM sat has like the whole plant area where they, like where the plant was, has sat. Now it's raised to the ground. There's no buildings there anymore because too many, um, too many like local kids were going in the, in the buildings and screwing around people were like okay so one of our bank like not banks credit unions one of our credit unions in town when they raised the building to the ground they had a bunch of bricks that they had taken from the buildings um the, the credit union was selling them to people for like five dollars a brick okay for just bricks from General Motors, from the General Motors that was here in town. Five bucks a brick, they were selling them. And where they were selling them, people were lined up in their cars around three of our city blocks to get a brick from this, from the General Motors buildings, which is just weird to me. But, you know, it was probably people whose family members worked there. You know, grandpa worked there, mom or dad worked there. Um, so not so strange, but like, I don't know, it's strange to me to want to own a brick from a building and to pay a credit union five bucks for it. Well, the money that Blackhawk, Blackhawk credit union, 
got for the bricks, they ended up using that to essentially like their their business park where they built all of their new administrative buildings. That's what they use their money from those bricks for. But we we still, nobody knows who gave them permission to take the bricks and sell them. Nobody has been able to answer that question. <laughs> so I don't know if they just went in there and just took the bricks and decided, well, oh, we're just going to load them up if you're just going to throw them away and then sold them. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But, you know, who's... Who's worse, the, the people who stole the bricks or the people who bought the bricks? I don't know. I don't know. Right, so this is good. Now, my containers, the Tic Tac containers, I just kitted down. Catch me. So I have plenty of space in the Tic Tac containers for this. Because it looks like I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 colors left to do. Ooh. So, I don't need this anymore, but I will save it. Yeah, I really tried, like, even having the... um or beads anywhere near me but I'm really really sensitive to smells like especially strong smells like that and I just couldn't couldn't do it um and I think I'm just going to do these kind of in order I saw a really cool um saw a really cool way that somebody was uh Kidding their stuff up, they they have to use plastic baggies. I'm not certain why. Maybe it was like really hard for them to uh, kit up using other things just because of mobility in their hands, maybe. But they have this system that they use where they use plastic baggies, but then they put the plastic baggies into these sleeves on a big plastic, like on a big metal ring, so that they could flip through the colors. I thought that was pretty neat. Not something that would necessarily work for me, but. Anyway. My little chihuahua is laying down next to me on the floor. Anybody who has little dogs knows that little dogs have stank breath. She's just laying there just snoring away, but I can smell her stinky breath. I can tell you that's one thing that came back from quitting smoking, my sense of smell. Poof. Woof. <laughs> Woof. Okay. Now this one, this one worked out okay, where four is four and five is five. But in story time, Amy Brown story time, it's like five is eight, seven is six, six is four. Makes no kind of sense. I'm like, why would you do that to people? That's cruel. That's cruel, Diamond Art Club. Really cruel of you. Getting closer. These little ones will be, I think, easier to do. don't need those so yeah I don't know I don't know I'm thinking I'm just I'm gonna keep on making content I might you know I might end up uh putting out new content every day for a little while at least until I find until I find employment um just put up new content basically every day. I think the other thing that that does too is like because I'm a new YouTuber, it helps the algorithm know where to like put me, like to know who to show me to. Um, so that's good. So just put out new content for that reason. But I think that um, once I'm working, it's going to be a little harder to do that. I just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. 
it'll give me something to do to make the content, honestly. So not, not terribly upset about that. Because like I said, I'm not used to this not working. So yeah, um, very mean because I usually did hit up via number. And with story time, I did kit up via numbers. But yeah, it is all out of whack. All out of whack. And I was real super confused. I, at one point, I put all the eights in the five spot because it was supposed to be a, no, it was supposed to be an eight. I, or a six, I don't even know. It was supposed to be something else. I had to go back and pick them all off. Thankfully, it was rounds, so it wasn't so bad, but Oh my gosh, what a pain. What a pain. Some of these colors in here are very strange. Like these like almost rust red, like rusty brick orange-ish. I'm assuming that's got to go around either her, like her eyes or her lips. What did I do with the big sticker? Oh, the big sticker is in my, um, in my journal. Oh, I know where the little sticker is. Here we go. So like those oranges or whatever, I'm assuming must be, well, that's not, mm, no, you can't see it. Too small. Hold on. Okay. So I'm assuming those weird oranges have to be for the area like up near her hairline, right there, or maybe her eyes or her lips, I'm guessing. Because I can't, I can't imagine another place that those oranges would maybe like there on her collar. Could be. Oh, her fingertips too. You know, like a fingertip. I don't know. Do not know. This is my, whoops, sorry. This is my journal, my diamond painting journal. My husband got me that journal for a birthday, like forever and ever and ever ago. And I was always afraid to put anything in it because I'm like, it's so beautiful. Like, I don't want to ruin it with ugly handwriting or, you know, something that doesn't mean anything or whatever. And I was afraid to use it, afraid to use it, afraid to use it. Like, you know, I shouldn't be afraid to use something that's meant to have, you know, words in it. So I was like, I'll use it for my diamond painting. I had never even thought to, you know, do one of those. Uh oh, what color was that? 355. Um, yeah, never even thought to do a journal before. Although, to be fair, um, I just never really had presence of mind to like keep track of thing. Like how many, you know, Katie from Diamonds and Washi, she knows how many kits she's done since she started diamond painting. I could not even tell you. I don't even know. I, it's a mystery. It's a mystery to me. So. Is it in the, you know, hundred, like she's got like 150 some finishes is, are mine anywhere near that? Probably not. Um, it's, it's a pretty good number. It's, I've been diamond painting since 2019. I just took a really long hiatus from it because I was working so many hours, um, that it was, it was really kept track in that way, but I know I've done a lot of pieces in the last few months. Shut this door. Somebody, oh, somebody asked me earlier how I was doing with Grand Canal and Basilica Venice. And I would say that I'm about, I've got a good sized, like this wide of a section all the way up the painting done but it's not one that I've been picking up a lot recently um, just because uh, I don't know. I haven't been in the right mind frame for that one. That one's one that I wanted to um, I want to be in a 
in a certain mood when I do it and not in a crappy headspace, you know? I feel like I do diamond paintings kind of based on how I'm doing it. And the reason that I I was like so into doing Catch Me, the Mrs. Butter D one, so freaking cute. I think I needed that kind of playful mood in my life, which was why I ended up doing that particular um that particular diamond painting. And then I just sat and hammered on it every single day for hours. <laughs> I ended up finishing it in record time. I did paint, okay, I did paint the moon. Um, it's like a little snack size piece, the one from, it's like an Amazon exclusive. But I did that one in two days. Two days I got that one done. I just couldn't put it down. It's a really beautiful, beautiful little diamond painting. It's just fun and it's pretty. made me smile the colors are like literally in my wheelhouse it's purples and pinks and blues this one is definitely also very much in my wheelhouse with the purples and the blues and the greens 754 getting closer Everybody's still working on whips. Just listening in. It's weird. The number of viewers went from 8 to 12. Like, all of a sudden, it was very weird. Well, thank you to the people who are hanging out for a long time. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. So, I don't know. I'm going to keep going on the uh on the search for a job i'm not gonna give up on that front like i said i i can't not make money i could lose my mind sitting here all that time but i'm also i don't want to i feel like i don't want to take the one job because the commute the money isn't necessarily there and I don't know. I felt like I said, I felt really, really, really misled by walking in thinking I was a, that I was going to be interviewing for um, a management position. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, why don't we bring you on as, a, as an assistant? I'm like, hmm, how about that's not really what I was told. So I'm a little I'm a little leery about that now. Because I don't want to go back to this place that I was in before where that particular executive director strung me along for a number of different things like pay increases or more staff or, you know, whatever. I don't I don't want to I don't want to play that game again, you know. So I think I will probably just. Very politely tell her that I just really I can't do that right now in my life for that. I mean, or for just a, a resident assistant position, I just don't think I can. I just don't think I can right now. I mean, far be it from me to turn down a position, but I don't know. It also has to also has to work out with my life, you know? And I don't think that that I don't think that that will work out with my life. I just want it. I just want it to be the right thing, you know, not the not the first thing, but the right thing. Like Dustin said, I shouldn't be the right now job. It should be the right job. And I feel like taking that job would end up it would be a it would be a, a for right now job. And I just, I don't need to do that to myself, I don't think. Getting so close. I think I might even end up 
not on the live, but, well, maybe on the live. No, probably not. Nobody wants to sit here and watch me diamond paint, do you? Um, I might end up working on her for a little bit. Run over here and do a little bit of the actual diamond painting. It's so pretty. It's pretty, but it's big. It's very big. Um, real confetti heavy, which I kind of expected. But there's some good... There's some good blocks of color. I wouldn't call it color blocking, but I would say there's some good blocks of color in there. I would say that there are some good blocks in there, but I would not call it color blocking. Um, and the confetti, I hadn't, I looked pretty close at it, but I, I didn't look close enough to judge, like, is it literally going to be confetti, confetti heavy, or like a, you know, like a jaded gem shop sort of confetti, or if it's just lots of color changes, but some good size sections. So, um, I also have a uh, story time going, and that one, it's got like a beige background on it, and it seems like it would be confetti heavy or uh, color blocking, but it isn't. In fact, the background on that is more i would say confetti than even the dragon itself is because the dragon at least is mostly like purples and there's some good sized chunks but the it is broken up by all these different tan colors yeah it it needs to be the right fit for me it does um and and that's the thing like they did say, you know, they, they wanted to offer me a resident assistant position because they wanted to make sure that I wanted to be there, which I, I, I respect that. I respect and appreciate that. But I think that the way that she made it sound after saying that was like, we're not even sure if, the, if that position is going to exist after this person vacates it. Okay, so I'm not sure what to do with that information because that could mean that that position never it never is on offer, you know? And if I had not dealt with this particular executive director before and had her kind of pull this sort of baloney on me before, I, I wouldn't give it a second thought because it didn't come out of her mouth. It came out of the director of nursing's mouth. But... Having dealt with this particular executive director before, I, I don't know. I'm so leery now. I'm so leery of that sort of thing. I also don't really... Okay, so it's, like I said, it's part-time, so no benefits at all. It would be two or three days a week, and then I would have the option of um, pick up, <clears throat> excuse me, pickups, because in healthcare, there's always open hours. There's people who call in, you know, whatever. Um... So I would have the option of making it full time or, you know, with overtime. If, But then, OK, so let's say even three days a week, three days a week. If I decide to for three days a week. Go to this job back and forth, even that right there is almost an entire shift just in the car. I don't know that I like the way that sounds. An hour there and an hour back, three days a week. That's six hours of my life that, sure, I could sit and listen to, you know, whipping chats or, oh, good, Laura, I'm glad you're getting a lot done. Um, I could sit and listen to whipping chats in the car. I, that's what I tend to do is I'll turn on a YouTube or whatever, eat up my data in the car. But I also don't. I don't know, like that's a lot of my time, a lot of my time. So I just, I think I'm gonna have to sleep on it. I haven't put in an application officially yet for the position. And then, like I said, I've got that interview on, it's the 22nd is the interview for the blind school for a teacher's aid position. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply for that and, and go, go to that interview and see what I think about it. But, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to play it by ear, I think.
I'm going to have to play it by ear. Okay, so for those of you who are just here for the kit up stuff, I'm putting in the second to last diamonds. I probably will go grab the canvas. It's like literally just, just over there. I'm going to grab it and um, I'm probably going to get it set up so that I can uh, start painting at least for a little while. What time are we at? What time is it? Oh, it's only 10. Psh, psh. Night's young. Night is young. Yeah, and that's the thing, Sarah. It's like, I, I've seen this woman's true colors before. So, I just don't want to, just don't want to go down that avenue again, you know? Just really don't. Whoa! Loaded little, uh, Fabric softener squares at myself. Um, and the other thing that Dustin is really concerned about, or uh, what did you call him? The 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 succulent prince, <laughs> the succulent king. Uh, one thing that he mentioned being really nervous about is in those types of jobs, if, even if it's just as a caregiver and not as a manager. I tend to literally pour my entire self into the, the livelihood of the residents and making sure that the staff is comfortable and all that stuff that I don't really, I don't really pay good attention to my own needs and I don't listen to my body and I'll, I'll work myself almost to death and he doesn't want to see me do that to myself again. All right. I'm going to, step away a little bit and make some crinkly plastic sounds you don't have to hear it and then Couple. Tuck it in there. Um, these. Oh, there's a board. I save these baggies, these baggies, um, and I leave it so I know what one it is, and then I put them into one of these containers. Oops, so that I know so that I know what pieces I have like right here's Grand Canal and Basilica Venice and then Ajisai and I put them in this container so that when I'm done with those pieces I can put the excess diamonds back into these baggies so that I don't have a lot of waste just did that with catch me oh one thing I can't remember to, for the life of me who I stole this idea from but the other thing I'm going to start doing with my finished pieces is um, I'm going to save a bag that has the colors that were in that kit, all the colors. So one of each in a little baggie with my with my notes. I haven't written my notes about Catch Me yet, but with my notes, I'm going to have all that. So I'm going to go back and get one from Grand Canal Basilica Venice. I think I might still be able to go back and do it for my other pieces that I have done. I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. All right. I just got to clean this little area off a bit. Yes. And then I'll show you again the, the fun washi tape that I've decided to use. Okay. So I'm going to go with this green for the outside edge and then I got just this purple kind of watercolor looking one and then this one that's got I think it's got lavender flower it's hard to see but a little lavender flowers on it so I got these in case I need them these out of the way Need to clear my space. 
Yeah, honestly, if I could just keep this room and then my daughter moves into uh moves into uh an apartment, that'd be great. <laughs> Sorry, kid. You don't get a room. Mine now. Cleaning up a little mess so I can move these. Okay. Whoop, bye scissors. Ever. Bye forever. I will also adjust the camera so that um you'll be able to actually see what I'm doing. Instead of being way up here, you can look right here. I think. Yeah, I think. I bet you if I can probably find a way to put these in here. I'm just trying to figure out what I would do with the. Oh, I can put the Tic Tac containers in this thing. Let's try a thing. Let me try some. Ooh, okay, okay. Okay, I'm liking this so far. Ooh, one more. Yes. I like it. Yes. I saw that cat. I think I saw that on the um maybe it was laura it might have been do you do no oh what is her i think her the girl's name is laura maybe i'm wrong I'd be wrong i don't remember but yeah i loved the idea of having a little baggie with all the colors in it so i could remember what colors were in it and then um, sir succulent. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, ener energetically, I, at my last job, I was working 70 hours weekly, every week. Literally dying. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm surprised I didn't end up with a stroke. Okay. Grab this. Oh, whoops. Well, dang it. I'll give you a little sneaky peek here, though. Look at Finished. I accidentally took it off the hanger when I was grabbing the other one, but it's done. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm bed first. Oh, look at her. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So I, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to tackle this because she's big. And I don't know. I think I'm going to go top right to left and then down. I think that's how I'm going to do this, maybe. Well, but if I do that, then... I'm just trying to think of terms of the lives that I do, and I usually have to work on the table. So I might do the bottom to the top. All right, so we're going to go like so, I think. For as much confetti as there is, <laughs> the word hype is in here, H-Y-P-E. Um... As much confetti as there is in this piece, it's pretty, well, here, I'm going to switch some things around. Okay, so we're going to go to the wide. Okay, there we go. And then I'll bring you down here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So move this and then I'm going to turn this one off. Not that one. This one. Nope, not that one. It's just too bright. There we go. Okay. I want you to be able to see, but I don't want there to be a big glare. So on this, 
you can see that there's um, more light without giving you more glare. Um, like this. Okay. So, give me glare. Okay. Nope, 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 nope. Gotta find the sweet spot. So, if you see, there's like this area here. It's, I mean, it's all pretty much the same letters. It's just they're in a lot of spots. So it's like each petal of this hydrangea is a different, like, you know, H on the outside, Y on the inside, E on the inside of that, and then three. Each one of them is like that, the petals. So it's color blocky, but it's not like... It's not so color blocky that it's un or uh, confetti. It's not so confetti that it's unmanageable. Yeah, it sold out before a lot of people could get it. But I'm going to be honest with you. I literally was on the new arrivals with the refresh button waiting to start hitting the button when she went on sale. Because what happened to me with um, Satura, I had Satura in my cart and I was paying for her. But it was like late. It wasn't the first release uh, or of that restock. It wasn't like immediately after the restock. It was like a few hours later or whatever. I had her in my cart. I was hitting the pay button and she said, I had her in my cart. I was so furious. OK, I'm going to make sure that I get this set up in a way that's not going to give you like glare directly onto. And then I think I'm going to start over here. Let's see. Roll it up a little bit. Yeah, it's totally pretty. It is real pretty, you guys. Really, really, really pretty. Okay, for now. I just want to be able to see it and then not have it, like, shining directly off of where I'm working. That's pretty good. But yeah, she sold out before a lot of people could get her, unfortunately. There we go. That should be good. And then I will work on just trying to see where this plastic is going. There's a bubble in it, like a ripple. A ripple in the plastic. It's a little better. Well, for now, I'm just going to work on a small square, and we'll see how far we get. Oh, so, let me grab this one or this one. I'm going to do this one. Um, But yeah, so I was so mad. So, so mad because Satura is the only one left that I don't have out of the Morales set. Yeah, I just... Mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Well, and a lot of their restocks, they're actually putting out at like midnight, 1230 in the morning. I only know that because Sarah and I are usually uh, awake at 1230 and messaging each other to get <laughs> online. Yep, yep, yep. And then that was the only reason I got Onihime was because Miss Sarah was on... Uh, was up and was like, yo, I want, well, actually what happened was Sarah said they really need to get Onihime restocked and then went to go check. And somehow she had manifested that and Onihime was restocked. So whenever you need something restocked, you ask Sarah to just, um, manifest something. And then apparently it happens. That's how that works. Because <laughs> that's how I got Onihime this this last restock. I wasn't gonna miss her. I was like, ooh, I was mad. Satura. Oh, that's a little pretty. It is, it's like lavender on the white there. I'm just gonna do a little square. A little square to start with. And we'll see where we get after that. Cause Lord knows I'll sit and do a live for 13 hours. I don't love, ugh, I 
don't love that the um, plastic, the sir, like the perforated plastic on these, occasionally when you're trying to tear the perforation, it will, um, it will actually like start to tear the plastic and not on the perforation. So I get a little bitty piece of plastic. The other thing is they could do wonders by not having the plastic. Um, they don't line it up correctly every time. And so, you know, I'll have an almost a full like thing exposed and then it dries out or it gets hair in it or whatever. Yeah. Just trying to hmm. I got this little teeny bit of plastic that didn't come off the per Ooh, murder murder tweezers. Don't do it, Naomi. Don't do it. There we go. Um, so yeah, sometimes the sometimes I like the perforated plastic, and then sometimes I'm like, uh, just go back to the old stuff. Depends on how much I'm fighting with it. Like right now. Like, this is annoying, but just for a little itty-bitty piece that will be in my way later. Why am I making that current Naomi's problem? I don't know. I don't know. All right. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I know. I was, I was happy that I happened to be, a, well, you knew I was going to be awake anyways, but I was happy that I was awake and you were like, get online now. Move this a little closer. Just agitated with this light. There we go. That should be fine. That should be fine. What did I do with the looking for the toolkit? What did I do? Pit. Oh. Hmm. There it is. I want it. Look at this cover minder that I got. It's so perfect. Yeah, the plastic sheet. So um, the perforated plastic, it's it's useful, and then sometimes it's not useful. Hey, Magnet, where'd you go? Come back. There we go. Sometimes it's useful. Sometimes it's not. It just kind of depends on what you're into. Um, some people do not like it because they like to, they prefer to section their own stuff and to not be told what to do. And that's okay too. You know what I mean? Like everybody's got a, everybody's got a preference. Um, but I don't, I don't mind. I mean, it doesn't make too big of a difference to me. But, you know. I don't think I'll end up using my 10 placer for this one. It just seems like overkill. Oh, I should probably. Uh -huh. I don't think that putty is that. I don't believe so. But I do probably need some more of my super sticky wax. So this that I'm using right here is Super Sticky Wax from Patty Wax. I'm going to turn the light on it. Ooh, there we go. Super Sticky Wax from Patty Wax. Um, I did buy like an actual little bin of it or whatever, but I have this little sample size and I figured I'd just get rid of it, you know, keep using it. Um, now, not everybody likes using that type of wax that you have to, oops, you have to scrape it. Um, some people do, some people don't, it just depends. Uh, I am, I like it just fine. I'm a hard placer though. So I do have to replace it pretty often. And then the putty that I use is butterfly effect wears winter dreams dot dot putty. I like butterfly effect wears putty because, because I don't like their wax. I don't think that maybe they don't have a wax, but I, I like their putty because it's almost a dry putty. whereas the real like 
creations Moran or, you know, other, other putties, I feel like are too sticky. I have a really hard time with super sticky waxes because I'm a hard placer and I, you know what, you're probably going to end up being too close and I'm going to bang you with, uh, my pen, but we'll see. I have an idea. I will. All right. I'm going to try not to make you dizzy or sick. So let me, I'm going to flip you a different direction. Sorry. I think it's going to be better for you from this direction. Be able to see everything. I'm going to move the tray. Here, I'm going to scooch. Scooching some things. Sorry. There, I think that's going to be better. There we go. Bam. All right. Now I won't hit you with the pen. Um, but yeah, so uh, I have just found that other um, putties are too sticky because I'm such a hard placer that um, I, I end up with everything getting stuck to the piece itself and then it's or like putty will come out the sides and get stuck to the canvas or um there's putty then all over the freaking diamonds and then it's just it's bad so we'll do a little square here Now, some people say that if you change direction that your that your diamonds won't be as straight if you like all of a sudden you're going from up and down to left to right. I don't know that I've found that that's the case for me. I think that my diamonds are pretty straight regardless or I straighten them, but I feel like that's just kind of a personal preference thing. I should probably put some washi tape on my pinky so that I stop sticking to the canvas because as you see, I use my pinky to balance my hand. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Really? Nope. So anyway, um, I uh, almost, almost decided to just immediately kit up uh, Soul of the Storm too. I think the only reason that I didn't is because I was running low on um, like storage space, storage container space, as you could see. Um, and I have those art dot ones coming. So if I do decide to kit it up, It'll be tomorrow, but I finished Catch Me, so I was like, yes, I can definitely work on a new piece. It was actually kind of a, the catalyst for that was like, I don't want to hit up my Ajisai if I don't have at least Catch Me done. So I might not do Soul of the Storm right away, but it's really not that big. And so many specialty diamonds in it. It's got... um fairy dust drills it's got you know your your standard ab's and it has the iridescent diamonds in it too um so pretty so pretty i'm gonna be putting up an early look video of that sarah recommended that i put the um early look for ajisai excuse me <clears throat> the early look for ajisai and soul of the storm together so it'll be a little bit longer of an early look video, but it will be, um, it'll have two of the 
new releases in it. So we're going to we're going to do that. I'm going to edit that, I think, tomorrow and then have it out this weekend. It made sense for me to have this live with, you know, the kitten chat if I didn't at least have the early lookouts sometime around the same time. I'm putting it out in a month just because. There we go. Pink. That's a little confusing. There's like a down arrow and a little tree sort of looking symbol, but they're right next to each other. So we will do the little down arrow first. I don't even need that many. <laughs> Upside down, right side up. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I, this, myself, I do need some clean putty though. Um, I've never had an issue myself personally, but you know, to each their own, I guess. Uh, so that's twice now I've gone up to Madison um, you know, 35 to an hour away for job prospects that just, I don't know, either didn't work out or, uh, were not what I thought they were going to be. So it is what it is. I have a full tank of gas in my car though. So that's, that's good. I filled my car up for it. And in a Prius, you know, filling your car up with gas, like that's two weeks worth of gas right there. Because I don't, I mean, even when I, even when I was working, I wasn't using much for gas. Like working in town, I would fill up my gas tank, me, you know, two weeks, a whole two weeks of just fuel. So, yeah, I don't know. I will still have some fuel left from that. They're starting to try to wander on me. I hate that. And the diamonds are like, well, I'm just going to go where I feel like going. There we go. Anybody else a hard placer like me? Because uh, I'm a real hard placer, unfortunately. Sometimes, sometimes it's a pain in the butt, but it's always been the way I've placed diamonds, I guess. Only a pain in the butt when, like, it comes to wax or putty because I have to be um real careful about what I choose as it has to be able to hold up to being pushed in real hard or whatever. Or I have to get used to pushing it back in or refilling or whatever. Man, these are really like trying to run away on me. Like the the glue is <laughs> causing them to run off. Let me move this for a second. Excuse me. Pardon. Gotta push it. Okay, get back over here. Oh, so sorry. Jeez, scared you. Scared myself.
yeah so let me know if you like it if it works out for you the way i said it works out for me because i'm a i'm a hard placer and i do i love my butterfly effect wares because it actually holds up to my hard placing and then i like the patty wax super sticky because that seems to hold up to my hard placing also. I've I've enjoyed it so far. It's not been too bad. I mean, like, so once I get going, yeah, it obviously, like, it's kind of creeping out the sides or whatever. So what I do is I just take my thumb and I fold it back over it and my finger and fold it back over. And then I give it a little push down and then it's flat again. And I just go back to using that again. And if there's a little bit too much on it, then I just sort of use my thumb and, you know, move it off the sides or whatever. But I tried the museum putty. I've tried, you know, putties from other companies and it just it does not work as well for me as the Butterfly Effect Wears does. And it could be too something to do with my um, my climate or the humidity in my house. I don't know, but. I just know that it's definitely worked really well for me. I think working on the rounds that I've been working on recently, like Catch Me and then working on Story Time, how much um, rounds just kind of go wherever they feel like going, and it's hard to get straight lines. And so I feel like, man, I feel like I'm a much better, like more meticulous placer than this, but... Because it's round. I just like going where they like going. And that's all. And I forget that about them sometimes. Oh, that's like the whole thing. Okay. Sorry, talking to myself. Like, I know I placed these straight. I come back to them. The glue has moved them around. I don't also like to use a light board sometimes, especially when working with the squares, because, you know, you can get really hypercritical about the little itty bitty gaps in between when using a light board. So I just don't typically when I'm working with squares, because I, I know, I know that it, it's a light, it's a trick of the light, literally, but I see every little mistake. And you can really get yourself like going a little nuts when you're paying attention to those itty bitty little gaps. So I just don't even bother using a light board when I'm doing squares. Unless I'm having like a really difficult time seeing and then that's just a different, that's a different problem. But otherwise I obsess over it. Because I'm so like picky about everything being so freaking straight that it'll it'll drive me nuts not staring at it for hours and like why doesn't this want to lay right it's just me being hypercritical i feel like i'm hypercritical of myself in that way sometimes too not that you guys have ever noticed that about me <laughs> uh never no never not ever I just get all panicky and worried about stuff. But I think it's I think it's like a, a product of being an exennial. There's this weird like middle ground you find yourself in. Yeah, for sure. I'm I bet trying to place in Florida with putty is just madness. Um I feel like being an exennial like just at the cusp of, um, you know, leaving Generation X and then being the like the beginning of the millennials, it causes this really weird disconnect because I guess I'm from a generation that had computers in the home and, you know, technology boom and all of that. But there's a whole lot about me that's still very... Um, traditional about the way that I find information and then 
I think the other thing that kind of sets Xennials apart from Generation X or Millennials is the fact that we have this really weird in between where like, okay, we're social people and and people might think of us as extroverts, but we really recharge by being alone, you know? I think that we know enough we know enough to be dangerous, right? Because of the technology, but we know enough about ourselves to be dangerous too because of all of the time that we spent without technology that we sit and we're hypercritical of ourselves. I don't know, maybe I'm like way off base with that, but I just feel like I feel like that's how I feel, you know? Like I had enough I had enough time of sitting and being critical of myself and, you know, other people being critical of me or each other. And then also enough of that, like behind the screen time where you're anonymous, like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's that weird, does that, does that even make sense? What I just said out loud? Yeah. The light board is a liar. Don't trust it. Don't believe it. It'll tell you beautiful lies. It's really pretty. It's such a different color than what I thought it was initially on the, like, on the render. It's not super, super different, but it's definite, definitely more vibrant than what is on the render. I think as good as this piece looks on the render, I think it's going to look even better in the finished product. And I cannot wait I almost want to challenge myself to be the first person to finish this piece. But there are people who have a day ahead of me. Like, they have a day on me. So, I don't know, man. I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I could do it. Um, We're going to go with that. Weird. Sort of put a pin in it symbol. Okay, so you get it. You get it. It's like, I feel like I'm recharged by being around people. But then... After I've been away from those people, I I need like literally no FaceTime. Like, I don't want to look at anybody's face. I go, I get in the bathtub, like especially when I was working, you know, I'd have to be so social at work with the residents, with the staff, and whatever. And then I would get home from work and I'd be like, tell my family like, yo, don't talk to me for like 30 minutes. I'm going to get in the bathtub. And I would just go hide in the bathtub for an hour two hours, however long it took me to recharge. Because as much as I really enjoyed being social with the residents and with the staff and whatever, I was so happy to get home and away from all of them. It's like, I just want to go be quiet and curl up with a book and not have anybody talk to me. These color choices, man, it's so good. It is so good. Yeah, I don't know. Do you think I could? You think I could do it? Like, get this done before anybody else? Probably not. There's somebody right now. Whoop. Uh-oh. I think I accidentally, like, leaked on my painting and left a little... A little mouth goober. Yep. It's just my spittle. I spittled a little bit. That's what talking over your canvas does. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a pretty quick painter, man. Pretty, pretty quick. Yeah, it's very real. It's very, very real. And taking days to recharge. Yeah, for sure. It's like there's there's almost a, a sense of like I I need you to like step back. I need you to even my family, even my family. I'm like your 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 presence is too loud right now. You're too much. You're too much. And, you know, I don't have a space really in my house except in here now. 
that I can really get away from people or the bathroom. And so like having that time, I think that's also, you know, I've been staying up so freaking late in here is because I'm, I'm just on my own. I'm going to be moving my craft space down to the downstairs when my daughter gets back. And I'm not super looking forward to that. I mean, granted, lives and things will still happen and whatever. But, you know, my husband will be present. My kids will be present. I don't, I'm not too worried about that. Like, only thing I'm really worried about, I guess, is maybe the dogs being a little bit extra. I'll just have to figure that out and see how it goes. But um, my husband's really a, a quiet, quiet person. I mean, not when he gets to know somebody. He's one of those, okay, you ever meet those people at, at parties where, you know, like they really are a wallflower. They're not talking to anybody. And you like, you go over to that person and you're like, what are you, you're not having any fun, man. You're just hanging out over here all by yourself. Just observing. And uh, then you'll be in the middle of a conversation with somebody and that person will just all of a sudden show up next to you. And they'll ask some really random question like, do you think that uh, if the president had his hair dyed um, green, that people would look at him differently? And I'm just coming up with something random, just something completely random, because that's what that person would do. And then as soon as you like start to consider the question that they asked, like, wait, are you asking about and then you turn to ask them the question and they're already gone? That's my husband. That is my husband to a T. He's a he's just like he's very quiet until he like gets comfortable and then he'll like, he'll make some weird or funny comment. And then you're just about to address whatever he said to you. And then he's gone, just gone. That's yeah, that definitely is him at every party that we've hosted, every party that we've been to, every social event, people are like, your husband's really nice. He's quiet though. And then by the end of the night, they're like, dude, I didn't realize that he was so hilarious and yet really weird. I'm like, mm-hmm. Yep, sounds about right. But he's like, he was born in 83. So he's like, right, right at the, um, he would be considered a full on millennial. They're sort of cuspy too, sort of. Um, but yeah, he, he is just a very much a, introvert person in comparison to me definitely when it comes to being like in social situations but then like I said after I've been in all that social situation it takes me days days to really recharge I for you know like I I feel like when I was younger I always felt like I was you know missing out on the party I always felt like you know nobody invites me to anything and uh nobody likes me, whatever. I would, I would always like hate the fact that I wasn't invited to things. And now I like actually kind of dread people inviting me to things. I'm like, please don't invite me to things. I don't want to go to things. I don't want to do things. I just want to stay home. Can I stay home? Also did not realize the value of naps when I was younger. It, that was, uh, I'm like, are you old? What do you mean you're taking a nap? And then, yeah, oh my gosh, when I discovered how wonderful naps are, it's like, please don't bother me, I want a nap. I don't know when I turned 85, but it was probably sooner than I meant to. But I love naps, and I, I love just being home. Like, people could just stop getting married. Yeah, that's the other thing, too. Well, I honestly never lack for something to say. It's, I think it's like my mom's fault. My mom was always very, very, very social. And she was the queen of like, okay, I, I don't know how it is in other places, right? But Wisconsin is a type of state specifically where if you're in a long line at the grocery store or you're in a, a long line at a amusement park or whatever, in Wisconsin, that is like 
the opportunity that everyone in Wisconsin takes to small talk. Everybody. You, you will not escape somebody looking at you, saying hello, you know, making a comment about how long the line is, making a comment about, oh, biscuits are on sale or whatever. That is the small talk opportunity for every person that lives in Wisconsin. So my mom was always really good at that. Like she could come up with anything in a line at the grocery store or in a line at the gas station or whatever. She was just very, very good at that sort of small talk stuff. And so the the filling, how long have I been on the slide? Filling that time with just chit chatty stuff, never had a problem with it. Never had a problem with it. But I've been told that like that's not normal in every person's state that you um that not every person like in a state would be comfortable with somebody just autom- like just randomly talking to them at the grocery store it's very much a like definitely is a Wisconsin thing i don't know if i've really had that exact experience in illinois i don't feel like illinois has been like not chatty, I guess. It's close enough to Wisconsin that it's a Midwest thing maybe, but there is, sorry, I had to take a drink. There's definitely uh, Wisconsin nice is a thing. Like people are very friendly here. They, if your car breaks down, you will have Four or five people have, will have stopped to ask if you need a phone, to ask if you need help, to, you know, offer assistance. You know, my cousin's neighbor is a mechanic, all kinds of stuff. Like, that's a thing in Wisconsin, whereas, you know, I've been to other states where if you're broke down on the interstate, best of luck to you. You're going to be there for a while until your own help comes or you have AAA or whatever. No, it's not everywhere, but definitely, like, I noticed that when we were having issues with our car in Ohio. Oh, my gosh. Nobody in Ohio wanted to help for any reason. They were like, mm, I don't know you. Sorry. Even asking somebody if they had a um, a funnel, like, a, a funnel. Like, do you have a funnel? Do you have, you know, or jumper jumper cables? That was a big one. You have jumper cables in Ohio. Best of luck. I hope you have AAA. They would, they like, they would look at you as though you had not even spoken to them. Like they wouldn't even acknowledge that you had opened your mouth to talk to them. I'm not saying that Ohio people are not nice. It's just they're maybe not as trusting of people, and that's okay. Maybe did things are different in Ohio. I don't know. Um, no judgment, but. I just definitely noticed that in Wisconsin, it's definitely there's a lot of chit chat when you're in the line at the grocery store and they will small talk you to death, to death. I keep spittling on my canvas. Naughty, naughty, naughty spittle. Dry. (laughs) Spittle spot. I just took a drink. It was my own fault. Um, but yeah, so the small talk thing, never been a problem. That and I used to host karaoke. And so you kind of have to learn to be a little hosty for that, you know. Like, I'm telling you, this render does not do the colors justice at all. The colors are so vibrant. When I pick this up and show you, the square even, the the color difference is radical. Radical as in radically different, not radical as in like 1980s slang radical. I mean, it is. It's pretty radical. Pretty rad, man. Here for dude. But yeah, and then I think the other thing too, with regard to like being an Xennial, we were also right 
right at the boom of Facebook, Facebook becoming a thing. And, you know, like social media being a thing. Now, granted, we had MSN, Messenger and whatever, but Facebook was a whole brand new animal then. That was a whole different animal. And, you know, nowadays, I don't think the youths can picture a time not having that kind of social interaction with each other. And then memes. Memes were just becoming a thing. Like, uh, freaking Nyan Cat, and, or Nyan Cat, whatever. Just all all the meme, like, being Rickrolled and, you know, the the old school memes. Nowadays, some of the memes that I see, I'm like, that doesn't even make sense to me. What is that supposed to be? What does that even mean? I don't know. And maybe I'm like getting too old now where it's like, oh, yeah, you ever you ever hear of uh, Genesis? That's rocking good stuff. Like, I don't want my kids. I don't want my kids to think that I'm like out of touch or something like I I started saying really ridiculous, like almost older person things like I tell the kids not to bother me while I'm watching my programs I don't use the word programs like normally I say I would say you know let me watch my show or whatever not like program I would say program but I'll say like older person things and then they'll roll their eyes at me or whatever but yeah I just don't I don't want them to think that I'm so freaking out of touch but then you know I'll be like asking my kids to explain these memes because I'm like I... yeah that is very true they are very nice in Chicago yes 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 I have I have found that Chicago people are speaking of Chicago um I really enjoy the show Shameless Sarah I will get into why I enjoy that show with you at another time um and it's not the uh the main dude that's in that bear show now but um Uh, I'll get into it with you another time. Uh, That said, you know, I will say to my kids, like, can you please explain this Mimi? Again, I say I say things like that because I'm trying to be funny. They don't think that I'm funny. What kills me, though, like what breaks my heart into bitty tiny pieces is they will say things like how cool Ryan Reynolds is or how cool Pink is or how cool, you know, whomever is. And they're like you know, 15 years older than me, but if I try and use any kind of lingity, like, you know, fresh and hip, they're, no, mom, stop it. Stop it. I was like, oh, okay. So Ryan Reynolds can be cool. Pink can be cool. Mom cannot be cool. Fine. Just fine. But yeah, I don't know, man. It's a weird, 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 it's a wild world we live in right now. A very wild world. And the thing that I'm like trying to impress upon my children is, you know, you have the most powerful tool known to man. You carry it in your pocket. That phone is smarter than the computer that got human beings to the moon. And you don't even care. You don't even care. Like respect the tool that you have. And, you know, there's just many, 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 many kids who don't. They don't understand the the power of the tool they have in their hand. And it's like, I know, again, I probably sound like an elderly person, but it's so important. It's like, I, you know what? It, I'll be one of those parents who will be like, yeah, and I had to walk both both ways uphill with no shoes or whatever but like encyclopedias y'all those are those were a thing i don't i don't know that schools even keep encyclopedias anymore but we had to go to the library and we had to like sign up for time on the computer you didn't just get handed a freaking macbook here you go do your homework yeah craziness crazy so being a being a an exennial is just very very uh strange. It's like understanding all of that, you know, 
all the technology and things like that, but also almost kind of resenting it in a way. Yes, the Midwest or, oh, oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> that's my favorite Midwest expression. Oh, <laughs> oh my Lord. When Dustin and I went to Northern, we went to the Northwoods in Wisconsin and okay. I, I probably have at least somewhat of a, of a Wisconsin accent. I'm sure that I do. I over enunciate my letters sometimes. So I've, I've been asked before, <laughs> been asked before if I had a speech impediment when I was a child. Like, no, I didn't. Um, I moved to Wisconsin from the South and I spent two years silent trying to pick up the accent here because I got picked on so mercilessly for my Southern accent. So I did everything I could to not have a Southern accent anymore. And so now I really I say my S's and my T's and I enunciate very clearly. Well, anyways, we're up in the like Northwoods of Wisconsin where they sound like Ubers, like they sound like, oh yeah, like sort of South Dakota, right? So we're, we're up in the Northwoods, we're at a gas station and we're trying to get something from the gas station. And I had already told Dustin that it's, it's hard for me because when I hear accents, I either mimic them or I pick them up very quickly. I don't know why. I'm probably one of those really dumb people that like I would go to freaking the UK speaking with a British accent and then people would look at me like I'm nuts because that just happens when I'm in a place. Well, so I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so scared to be up here because I don't want to come back home and start, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, you can, you can just put anything in the roast. You can put potatoes, you can put carrots. Like I didn't want, to, I didn't want to come home sounding that way. I'm like, oh no, just if we see people, we're just going to have to avoid them entirely. Well, we go into this gas station and this guy is giving, like he comes in with this stack of flyers and he's like, uh, he goes up to the register and he's like, so do you mind if I hang some of these flyers up? We're doing a, we're doing a, a raffle. And, and I'm like, oh no, I look right at Dustin and I'm like, we got to get out of here. We got to get out of here right now. So the, the guy behind the counter is like, oh no, that's fine. You know, also very, very, very like upper Wisconsin accent. Oh no, you go right ahead. That's just fine. You can put that right down on, on the counter there. And, uh, the other guy is like, well, what, what, <laughs> what's the raffle for? And he goes, well, leave it to Wisconsin where we're going to do a raffle in a bar for guns. But the but the raffle for the guns is actually for a school. And then they're like dying laughing. And I I'm, I hand Dustin my items, like literally hand him what I'm about to buy. And I walk out the store. I was like, I can't be in here anymore. I cannot with this conversation. I cannot with these people. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, mm -mm. And so thankfully, we didn't run into too many more people that sounded like super, super accent. No. Oh, Lord. Because I'm terrible for it. I'm terrible for it. Jessica, that happens to me as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like a Southern accent, a British accent. I accidentally, well, I worked at the Bristol Renaissance Fair for 10 years, and I had to do um, what's called a country, the country dialect. So it sounds kind of Irish. It sounds British, but it, it's, it's very weird. So, you know, being around somebody who's British, having to have affected a sort of kind of British accent, it really messes you up, man. It messes you up pretty bad. Well, my, my kids, to your point, Dana, my kids all like they got my books from when I was younger. I had saved every book that I pretty much owned. Um, and explaining to them like, okay, so the books that I had were all weekly readers. If you guys know what weekly readers are, they were like, um, scholastic, scholastic books that you would get, you would pay like a certain fee or whatever. And then they would bring you X amount of books for that week or whatever week, month, month, whatever you were signed up for. 
And so they have all my old weekly readers that had like my Fraggle Rock books. It has, you know, even all of my Dr. Seuss. It has everything in there. And they're like, well, you didn't just, you know, you didn't just get them from the store. Well, no, I mean, Barnes and Nobles even wasn't a, wasn't really a thing then. So you're getting my books that I got in the mail. Or we had people that would come to our house and try to sell us, you know, like encyclopedias and thesauruses. You had to get your information from really unusual places. Yeah. And then like trying to figure out right now, you you would probably lose my kids somewhere in a library. They wouldn't even understand the Dewey Decimal System. That's the thing. I don't even know if they teach the Dewey Decimal System. Do you know they do not teach children cursive? Children do not learn cursive anymore at all. There was one kid at work, um, a young man, you know, like 20 years old. And we had an older woman who was 60 or something that was working for us. And when she would write up medication orders on the papers, um, she would write it in cursive. And he could not read it. He told me straight up, I can't read that. I don't know what it says. I can't read it. I was like, you can't read cursive? No, they don't teach it. They don't teach it anymore. It's, yeah, honestly, Southern accents. Uh, well, the thing that I do like about Southern accents, though, or even just conversations in the South, conversations in the South take longer because I feel like the words are slower and not because the people are slow. Nothing, nothing like that. It's just, there's no rush. There's no rush in a conversation. There's no rush to get places. There's no rush to do anything. Not even to have a, a, a talk about whatever. That's the one thing I do appreciate about like Southern conversations is that you want to savor it. It's like you're enjoying the conversation and you don't need to just be somewhere. You know, I do love that. But yeah, it's, it's like trying to show him how to read cursive when he'd never been taught. And I'm like, you'd never learn cursive in school? Well, it's not necessary. Why, why would they need to learn cursive? They don't write longhand anymore. Um, there's a movie on Netflix. Uh, the, Michelle and Barack Obama told people that they should watch it. And I'm not being political. Uh, it's a movie about, it's like something about like they're on vacation, this family, they're going on vacation for the weekend and then like the world starts collapsing. I forget the title of it, but it's got, um, uh, is that Sandra Bullock? No, no, that's Bird Box that I'm thinking of Sandra Bullock. Um, Julia Roberts, maybe? I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'm able to write a check. Yeah, no, no clue. Wouldn't even know what to do if I handed one of them a checkbook. He'd be like, what is this? In fact, most places don't even accept checks. They're like, why don't you just use your debit card? Your chip and pin. Um... But that movie, it like, it explores on how you could basically end the world by just shutting, beginning with shutting down communication entirely, like getting, you know, shutting down Facebook, having Facebook not working or TVs or the internet, you know, just shutting down all of Wi-Fi and how it would cause such a, a like a panic and a chaos. Um, it's a, it's a really good movie, but it's a really scary, like the, the narrative of the movie is really freaky, really, really, really freaky, um, was not one that I was super comfortable with after watching, but, um, really excellent movie, just really scary. Like what if that really happened sort of deal? Yikes. Um, but yeah, just. Like the whole not being able to read cursive thing, like that blew my mind. It just blew my whole mind. The colors are so vibrant, you guys. Like I cannot wait until I finish the square and show you what they look like because it is crazy. 
the render is beautiful, but the render does not do these colors any. So, so pretty. And then like the other thing I notice is even though they believe they do not have accents at all, people over like in California and what have you, I mean, depending on where, of course, um, you, oh, leave the world behind. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Freaky, freaky, freaky movie. You were angry with the depiction of the, of the, sh like the, of the movie or what do you mean you were angry? Um, yeah, that one, that one freaked me out a little bit. Not going to lie. I can't wait until this is put up as a live and it's like six hours long. You're like, what in the hell? <laughs> what in the actual were these people doing for six hours? Uh, I, um, like I said, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to get political, but I know I, if I remember correctly, uh, Barack and or Michelle Obama, like, produced that movie or maybe had some hand in it, I think. I could be lying completely. I could be completely wrong. Yeah, I'm reading your comment. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Didn't even know how to. Oh, so the stand, they remade the stand uh, recently with James Marsden. That was actually a really good remake, too. A really, really good remake. Um, it has kind of the stand vibes, though. I can tell you that much. But yeah, that leave the world behind. It's like it starts out with, you know, basically there there's a. A, a world war they think a world war is happening but really nothing's happening they're just screwing with america first by like shutting down internet all communication phones aren't working and then they start spreading misinformation and it's um it's it is a political movie in the sense that like it's talking about how if another country was to really you know, want to mess with us, this is the easiest way for them to do it. And it's scarily true in that respect. Like, it wouldn't take much. But um, just a really good and freaky movie. Oh, yeah, you know, um, the ending. I never understood... I never understood the um, the, the deer thing. So maybe I'll have to ask have to have you like explain the whole like like block of deer thing to me <laughs> he didn't know he had to go to the customer service booth to get a freaking money order what did he think it was just going to be a uh, an app he could buy in the store <laughs> oh, oh funny see now this is agitating so i'm using the i'm using the perforated plastic but like right up here, there's like a half of the row is not covered by glue. And so I'm going to have to lift that part up later or right now, even with this particular color and do that next row. Otherwise, I feel like I'm going to end up with this space where then like either I'm going to get fur on those or it's going to dry and I'm going to be really upset. That's the only thing that I don't like about the perforated plastic is when they don't measure, like when they don't put it on here fully correctly and then you leave like a half of a row gap. Whoop, I only need one. Um, it leaves a half of a row gap and then, yeah, I don't like, I don't like that don't like that but I I didn't know how much I actually I'd never done a squares piece until well I got I bought 
a square piece. Which one was it? Um, apples. I bought a square piece on accident, technically. And I didn't want to work on that until I'd had some practice. So I bought some paint gem pieces so I could practice on squares. And I did the paint gem pieces. And then I was like, I'm, I need to graduate to something bigger. So then I got uh, Paint the Moon from the Amazon exclusive from Diamond Art Club. And oh my gosh, with how smooth squares go together and how like just perfect fit they are. I was like, I have a new obsession and it is squares. <laughs> oh, like now I would rather work on a square than a round. Just because of how well everything just it's so tight and just a wonderful fit. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, when I pull away with this, you guys, you're you're about to you're about to see. This is crazy. It's so pretty. It's so much more. You just finished Paint the Moon today. Isn't it beautiful? I love it. I love all the ABs. I love just everything. Um, was it Soul of Storm, Soul of the Storm that has the new, I'll have to look at it because I think, no, that one's around, isn't it? Wait, let me look. Soul of the Storm is, where did I put it? Know where I put it? It's around. Maybe it was this one, um, where the ABs or the fairy dust diamonds are the new are the new like more than 20 facet ones? I don't know. Because these sure do look like they've got lots and lots and lots and lots of facets on them. I don't have any flat tops on anything so far. Just beautiful. But yeah, I, I love it so much and it definitely just, it, it created this just love of squares. I love the way that they lay down so nicely, that they fit together perfectly. Like not with a light board, obviously you see every little bitty thing, but you know, when you're just normal doing a painting normally with the squares, it's just like, like butter, like butter. I did not know really what I was getting into when I did paint the moon. I didn't know if it was going to be like the paint gem pieces. And because those fit together well, and they're resin squares, but they're not, they're not diamond art club drills. So, you know, they're great, but they're not just these are I love, I love their drills. Love them. Obsessed. I do have to move slower with the squares. Like I, I don't paint as fast, but you got new nails. Yeah, this, this is a Diamond Art Club kit and then Paint the Moon is Diamond Art Club, but um, it is on Amazon specifically. You can't get it on their website. It's like a snack sized kit. Um, it's not super big. I don't remember the exact, um, the exact measurements for it, but it's not huge. It's, it's a really nice sized kit. And it's a really good introduction to squares. If, if you ask me now, the paint gem ones, uh, those are paint gem. Uh, those ones are really, really, like I said, it's really good quality and it was a really good start because they're only like a five by seven inch piece when they're done. And it, a lot of those are partials. They're not full drill or full, full canvas, like the whole, uh, drill area. But, um, I love 
love I, I bought so many paint gem sets because I loved them so much. I finished like, I don't know, four or five different paint gem kits in the span of like, um, whoop, geez, in the span of like a month. I finished so many of those. Like their rainbow edition, I did the black magic edition, um, and then I bought more of them. I did, uh, the mystery, the mystery edition. That was back when if you bought one kit, they gave you a mystery kit for free. But yeah, paint, they have actually some really fantastic, um, diamond art club pieces on Amazon that are Amazon ex exclusive, or it's the same as the ones that you would get on their regular website. If they're smaller, like the one landscape. Um, Oh, I can't remember what it's called, but it looks like it looks like water running through green, like mossy covered rocks. Um, that piece in particular, full size is really big, but on Amazon, they have a much smaller version of that kit. I feel like they use their Amazon store to like rope in people who are used to maybe buying on Timu or used to buying on um other sites and getting kits that are a little less expensive and not quite as big. They tend to, you know, rope in their beginners on there too. People who maybe have never heard of Diamond Art Club because my first official Diamond Art Club piece was on Amazon years ago. Um, but it was, it was like a little owl. It was a cute little owl. Um, I had no idea about the website back then, just the Amazon site that they had. And so you'd get a few of your like kits that they would offer on their, on their website or on the app. But for the most part, it was like either smaller versions of those or just Amazon exclusives. They have some really good ones. Really, really good ones. In fact, who just did a haul video with Amazon exclusive Diamond Art Club? Um, I know Katie from Diamonds and Washi has done one recently. So did the principal painter, Kara. Kara did one recently too of a you or of an Amazon haul from Diamond Art Club. You want to check that out. Because um, yeah, there's some really decent stuff on there. These colors, you guys, I can't get over it. I cannot get over how pretty. I can't wait until this little square is done so I can lift it up and show you guys because it is so good. The angle that you're at is not really doing it much justice. Oops. Plus there's like the glare from the light a little bit. Making a diamond sparkly. Yeah, that piece with the moss. I almost bought that one in both sizes, actually. But I was I was saving my I was saving my points. And what I ended up with by saving my points and saving uh I had a little bitty bit left of a gift, like a gift card. Um but I managed to get this kit and soul of the storm. For four dollars and fifty cents because really all I was paying for was like the remainder of the shipping that um my gift card and my one hundred dollar um like VIP points didn't take care of yeah so I got this kit and soul of the storm for four dollars and fifty cents I haven't bought anything you said the diamond stitcher I don't think I've bought anything from that I always have to do a little, just a little wee bit extra research on making sure it's a licensed kit, you know, make sure it's licensed company. Um, because, you know, like there's one in Australia, forget what that company is called, 
Um, they appear as though they're licensed and they are selling um, definitely stolen artwork um, because the stuff that they're passing off for their artwork was stuff that was on Craftably. So I'm assuming the reason that they're using like stuff from what was on Craftably, one is so that if somebody's searching that image or whatever, they would normally get Craftably, but now they're getting this place in, um, in uh, Australia, but also there's not somebody to come after them because Craftably is going out of business. That's my assumption. I don't know that that's true, but I have a feeling that I am not far off the mark. And then the other person or the other company I haven't I haven't ever bought from is uh, what's that? Make your own wall art. The dude who does alien putty. And the only reason I haven't purchased from him specifically is. He puts out um he puts out videos sometimes on like his social media where he's like complaining about things like he's you know talking about why it doesn't matter to buy AI artwork or you know blah 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 whatever and I just I don't like his attitude I just really don't like his vibe like you're not doing a really good job of representing your company when you're out on social media just yelling about stuff like calm down <laughs> calm down <laughs> it's not that serious just diamond painting but there's a new a new company um called diamonds on canvas that they're coming out with like a full-sized piece they have these like kits or something that you can buy they're like stress anti-stress kits which i thought was cool um, they had a winter version of it, uh, but they're coming out with an actual, like, full-sized, almost, I think it's like a 50 by 70 or something, two different paintings, licensed painting, um, but they're in, like, pre-order phase right now, like, pre-purchase phase. They want to see kind of how many people are going to be interested before they even do a printing, so, um, and it's hard, too, because I think the only place you can really order, like, even pre-purchase stuff from that is uh, um, her Instagram or her Facebook, Diamonds on Canvas, which I couldn't even find, like, a Diamonds on Canvas website. So I think she's working on that. Otherwise, it's like... How am I supposed to tell people where to find you if I don't know where to find you? And I told her, you know, I'll buy a kit and I'll I'll do a unboxing on my YouTube and whatever. But aside from the stuff that I'm getting from Art Dot, I pay for I pay for everything. Like I don't have any like deals with anybody. The only thing will be when. I do finally start doing sneak peeks with Diamond Art Club like once a month to start with. Um, that will be, then I'll, I will have received some, you know, free stuff. But otherwise, I pay for everything that I have. I don't get free stuff. This is so wordy. Yeah, prior to my using the points on this stuff, um, yeah, one, there's a time limit on their points. Uh, the thing that it, like, irks my soul, but, like, what are you going to do, I understand, is you cannot use rewards codes with discounts. So, like, you can use your rewards points to get something or get 50 bucks off or 100 bucks off or whatever, whoop, but you can't, um, you can't get off and get a 10% discount like they don't let you do that now if you have a gift card that's a little different story but um if it's trying to get a discount like a percentage discount you can't do that they don't let you do that so like 
if you're going to use your points to get a multi-placer and you want to also get 10% off your purchase, you can't do that. But I understand. Like, I don't want to give paintings away, you know what I mean? And then I like being part of the VIP group because they have a special code on there for um, a larger discount than the 10 you normally get. If you've ever purchased from Diamond Art Club's uh, website or the app, you're a part of the VIP, like you are eligible for the VIP group. It's not like you got to have a certain amount of points. It's like as soon as you make a purchase, you're eligible to join. Um, and that higher discount is just worth it as it is just for that. But the code can't be shared outside of the VIP group, so I can't tell you what it is. It's a secret. All right, done with that color. Yeah, honestly, as, as confetti heavy as I thought this was going to be, it's like I said, it's, it's really not. I mean... You're on, like, yeah, you're moving around a lot for the color. Oh, my God, that gradient, you guys. I can't. I cannot. It's so pretty. It is so pretty. All right. I need a little, like, this symbol. <laughs> it's so pretty. But, yeah, as much as I thought it was going to be really confetti heavy, it, it is, like, but... You're on one color for a long time. I can't wait to get this done and lift it and show you guys. Oh, it's so gorgeous. So pretty. I'm one of you here. Good for you. Good for you, and thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Are you guys getting a lot done on your pieces? What are you guys working on? Sarah, you did you you uh, get the swing kitted up yet? Like, were you going to do that? I'm just so bummed that my jade isn't here yet. I mean, granted, I'm going to wait. And it's a mystery kit, so I can't unbox it anyways, like. I mean, I, I suppose I could show people like how a Jaded Gem Shop mystery kit arrives, but I'm not going to be able to do much about showing much more than that. So maybe I can do an unboxing, I guess, but it might be helpful too, because I guess I I've been under the impression about how it's going to arrive anyways. And so I'll be answering some questions really for myself once it gets here. Because I've been going off of what um, what Katie has said on her uh, on her whipping chats or whatever, and so I'm not even really sure what it's going to look like when it gets here. So I think that'd be a bad idea. Yeah. Okay. So oh, good. Hi, Audrey. Welcome back. Um, yeah, so the way that that works is like once you get up to ah, once you get up to diamond level, um, you start earning fifteen points for every dollar that you spend. Otherwise, you're at ten dollars per dollar that you spend. So, like for instance, even though even though I used a gift card and like the remainder of a gift card and uh my one hundred dollar off coupon, like with my rewards points. On this and the other, I still got 400 some odd points back just using my points. You know what I mean? Like I still made a purchase, even though I didn't technically make a purchase. Like I only spent $4.50, but I still got 400 and some odd points for it. So it's not like if you use a gift card or if you use that $100 coupon with your rewards that you're not getting those points right back. So I thought that was pretty cool. Cuz I had wondered I'd wondered how that was going to work when I made the purchase. I'm like, so I'm using my points and I'm, you know, technically I'm spending money, like am I going to get points back? And I did. So if you were wondering, yes you do. 
You get your points right back. I made a satisfying sound. I just cannot get over how pretty this is, you guys. I can't. I know I keep saying that, but like, seriously. Two, two, two. Pretty. You got a big old like spot of glare on there so it's hard to see but when i when i bring this back you're gonna go like because it's pretty it's real pretty i can't believe how much you're getting done of that wedding memories audrey that's crazy. EW Jenga? I don't know what that is. Yeah, $4.50. Well, because what happens is, I, technically it shouldn't have been really anything that I paid, but the way that it works is, um, so initially my purchase would have been over $75 and shipping would have been free. But because I used my gift card and the um, and the uh, rewards points, technically then I wasn't spending $75 and my shipping reapplied. So, you know, you're still going to end up paying for shipping for something, even if you've got... Now, if I would have had $4.50 more cents on my gift, you know, with my gift card, then it would have paid for the whole thing and it would have just been free, but because it lowered the the bill but you know below um $75 then I had to pay for shipping so essentially even if you get the kits for free you're still going to have to pay for the shipping you know cuz it drops that below 75 bucks so I'm not mad about it though I'm not mad about it at all very 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 pleasantly Pleasantly surprised, pleasant, pleasantly heavy, 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 heavy. I just, I'm so glad that I got this piece. I had been looking at this piece in particular in her artwork and wondered if they were going to do this one. And I'm really, really glad. I don't know if this like made the rounds for voting or whatever, because I don't, I don't pay attention to that because that's on the. Is that on the regular Facebook page or is that on the VIP page? I feel like that's on their regular Facebook page, maybe, um, where you can vote for uh, what piece they're going to come out with next or what artwork they're going to use. And granted, when you vote, it takes a while before they create that piece. So it's not like you vote for it and then the next week you have that painting or something that comes out. But... You know, it's a little while, you've got to wait, but uh, you can vote on what pieces they come out with based on, you know, artists that they're licensed with and whatnot. So somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that, about if it's the regular Facebook page or their VIP page. Yeah, you could honestly... You could keep your points forever until you've got thousands of points, but um, if you don't make a purchase and you're just sitting on your points banking them without making any purchases in between, you'll lose them because they essentially like expire, which on the one hand you might think, well, that's not fair. Well, but it is fair because they got to, you know, they got to make their money somehow and if you're not spending any money with them but you're just sitting there banking on points you could keep banking those points and you know get a hundred dollars off this and a hundred dollars off that and a hundred dollars off this and like you know essentially never spend money with them so you know i get it yeah it probably sucks for people who want to bank and bank and bank on points but um they they are a business and they got to make money they are in the business of making money Oh, you gotta fit them together like I did. 
Aha. Yeah, shipping will get you every time. Every single time. Yeah, and you can vote, and like you're saying, Dana, you can vote and still not get your choice. You know what I mean? Like, but I they use that data to see kind of what the audience is willing to spend their money on. Um, and then, you know, of course, they're their business who has the right to pick whatever artwork they want to whoop, artwork that they want to. So they might decide like, no, we don't really care for that or yeah, the fans voted on it, but we just decided we're not going to do that piece or whatever, or, you know, maybe they lose licensing with the artist or whatnot. I, I'm sorry, but I think this Hannah Lynn, this Hannah Lynn craze just really makes me laugh because like she's going to be available at other companies. Now I get there is no company out there that compares to Diamond Art Club in my, in my opinion. I, and I'm not, I'm not paid for that opinion. Um, I just really think that there's not another company that's comparable out there. So yeah, I get, you want your handle in from Diamond Art Club, but like, if you just like the piece and you're not super picky about what company it comes from and you just like the artwork, then I think she mentioned uh, licensing with Dreamer Designs. I know, bane of bane of diamond art club's existence because they're copycats but um she's going to license with dreamer designs and i think she said oraloa they're um they're a canadian based uh diamond painting company oraloa is o r o l a wait o r o l o a oraloa um and like all of the names of their artworks are in like French. Uh, principal painter, Kara, she just did an unboxing of an Oraloa piece today, actually, on her YouTube. Oh, almost done with this square. It's so pretty. All right, we're gonna do gonna do P next. Oh, zip, 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 zip. Oh, pretty. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, like, like I said, as confetti heavy as I thought it was going to be, it's actually not, it's not that bad. Not here so far, anyways. Watch me eat my words later, but maybe when I get to the next little section of flower over here, but right now. There's two 6,000s in here, so two of their, or was that, wait, maybe that was, um, never mind, that was, I think, Soul of Storm. Let me look. There's, no, no 6,000 in this one. Um, there's 6,000 in two of them, Soul of the Storm, and they're, like, gray, gradients um for those who don't know uh diamond art club has their like they make their own diamonds in house and so when they find colors that um they're missing in the gradient on the color like in the in the paintings they will create their own gradient color to go in that like to fit that gap, which I think is pretty freaking awesome. Because, you know, there's only 400, what is it, 490, 490 something colors in the DMC 
color list. So being able to fill in even more of those gaps, like that's super cool. All right, I'm gonna get up here. Whoa, no, stop it. There we go. Gotta do one up here. Yeah, that's like I said, that's my one my one gripe perforation is that it if they don't get it spot on onto the canvas like not in between squares. Otherwise if it's in between squares, then you end up with this like, you know face and then I'm not trying to have my glue in that face dry out and then I can't get diamonds to stick to it later. So I think that's going to be an ongoing issue with this one just because it's like a half a square off already going like this direction. But we'll see. We shall see. Close. One more. Let me see. Have I ever heard? See, okay. Well, okay. With Soul of the Storm, the girl's eyes are closed. You can't see, like, Yes, her normal, Camilla de Erico's normal art style is to do the big-eyed girls, but this particular big-eyed girl, you can't see her eyes. Like, her eyes are closed, and her head is down, like her bangs are covering most of her face. So that element is taken out of it, um, in case it was, like, stopping you from getting it because of the artist. Uh, I kind of like that about them, just because my my kids used to play with, like, brat dolls. Um, but otherwise, with, uh, oh, but you were talking about Hannah Lynn. Otherwise, you're right. I That's the thing that I don't like about Hannah Lynn's girls is I'm not a fan of the big weird-eyed girls, personally. Um, Camilla de Erico, like, some of her art does have that. They're, like, big-lipped. But it's not, it doesn't have the same vibe, I, I feel like. the Those girls don't have the same vibe. Like, Anna Lynn's are really cartoony. And, I mean, no, not knocking anybody who likes that art style or likes, you know, likes her artwork, but it's not been for me. Diamond Paint Kit. I have not heard of them. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, one way that you can usually tell, Kat, uh, if a company has licensed artwork one, they're crediting the artist right there on the listing. If they're not crediting the artist right there on the listing, then they're doing something shady. Uh, probably stealing artwork. Um, as, as, and then the other thing, they should have a render somewhere. And then if you cannot find the render or, or like what the canvas is going to look like when you purchase it, if you can't find a render anywhere, because sometimes you can't, um, see if you can't Google like diamond paint kit finished pieces or something. Because if they're a reputable company, then somebody somebody who, you know, covers licensed kits will have at least one finished piece by them or at least have reviewed an unboxing. Um, but... It's not one that I've heard of. That's not to say that it's not licensed, because just because I haven't heard of them before. But, you know, look for uh look for an artist's name because they're not gonna they're not gonna credit artwork to somebody who's not the artist. The artist will find it. Or sometimes you can do a like a Google Lens search where you search the particular artwork in Google Lens. And it'll tell you where that artwork, you know, like other places you can find that artwork online. 
Um, so like if it's their own person, you might not find their artwork elsewhere, but if it's stolen, you might find it like, oh, this is a diamond art club piece. This isn't, you know, this doesn't belong to them. They just copied it or whatever. But yeah, definitely look for an artist's name. That's usually a good indicator. If you find a finished piece or even like, are they showing a render? And I don't mean like, you know, those ones where it's a render, but it's not a render. It's just a picture inside of like a frame and a fake house or whatever with a couch in front and all that crap. Like not that kind of render. I mean, like an actual, this is what it's going to look like when it's in squares type render. These gradients, you guys are crazy. They are crazy. Whoop. No, stop it. Rolling. Rolling away. Now the green down here is like a little bit like green, but I'm not mad at it. Whoops. Ran away from me. Oh no, it's my real bad staticky one. Hopefully, it won't be too bad in the tray. <laughs> mm. I think I need more than that. I'm reading more, more of the comments. Dominic, forgot the last name, did the old lady in the shoe. Oh, yeah. Davison, Dominic Davison, yeah. He does some really great landscapes. David McLean. Ooh. But doesn't Dominic, no, but Dominic Davison is a Diamond Art Club artist, right? Am I crazy? Did I just make that up? Maybe, maybe I did. I'm good at that sometimes. That's satisfying crunch when you get a square into the right place. It's my favorite. Yeah, I have a really hard time now going back and doing rounds. <laughs> Now that I've done squares, it's like, mm, but I really like my squares. They fit so good. It satisfies like that, that part of my brain that needs things to be just so. Like it, it's like scratching an itch in a good way. I also like to single place with my multi placer. I just find that it saves time. Some people will not do that. They don't like to do that, but I do. But I do. Hmm. Okay, that looks good. Oh, just kidding. There was one single one right there. Yeah, for as confetti heavy as I really thought this was going to end up being, it's really not. It really isn't. I mean, so far. Can't speak for the rest of the kit yet, but what I have done so far is very nice. Few more colors to go. Oh, they both are, and they're both with. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have not tried an Oraloa piece yet, but I have seen really, really good work out of them, and I've heard good things. So, 
they're definitely on my to try list. I like got on their mailing list before I even like had con what the hell was that? I had a drill on my hand and when I rubbed my face it jumped off of me. Like ah, bugs. Yeah, I had them like I was on their mailing list before I really even got it. I was like, I'm going to come back to it. That's what I end up doing all the time. It's like, oh, I want to try this company. I'll come back to it. Do I always remember to come back to it? Nope. I sure don't. All right. Almost done with the square. I just got to do these few up here that I didn't do earlier. Because that was before I realized it was a whole half a freaking thing off. Now, all right. Comment time. Question time. Uh, do you guys like to keep your plastic on your piece, regardless of where it's from, Diamond Art Club, whatever? Do you like to keep your plastic on your piece, or do you like to take the plastic off and do release paper? I found the release paper that I was complaining about the other night. I paid $12 for this, okay? I'm going to get it out. Um, $12 on Amazon. I was like, yeah, sweet. These release papers, there's a hundred of them for 12 bucks. And it said it was an eighth, like an eighth quart or like a, an eighth of the paper. I have the dimensions, obviously, because if I had. Um, but let me show you what an eighth of the paper was because it was eight different designs or whatever the hell. Yeah, this is the eighth of a size of piece of paper. Yeah, great. There's a hundred of them, but what am I going to do? I, I would have to use every single one. So like, they're very cute. They're so cute. But yeah, really cute. Whoops, sorry. Making the camera go nuts. Really, really cute. However, they're tiny. Fit in my hand. Barely, barely the size of, like, they don't even go up my whole fingers. Somebody told me to, re like, return them to Amazon because I haven't used any of them. But 12 bucks, 12 bucks, not worth 12 bucks. I should have just shopped at Crafts with Crashly like I had intended to. But I thought, oh, but they're you they'll get here tomorrow. Not always, not always a better option getting them tomorrow, you know. All right, I got a few in this little area up here. I gotta get. I'm just gonna work right out of the little container. Boop. I got another one. Go with my finger. Boop. One more. There we go. There we go. All right. And then this one. I guess I'll put these in the put these in the thing. I don't need many. Oh, I got a bonus purple one. Okay, so leaving the plastic, leaving the plastic. If the plastic is perforated, you'll leave it on there. Yeah, so I actually enjoy, like I said, I enjoy the perforated plastic personally. The only thing that I don't like is, like I said, when it doesn't line up correctly with the lines on the canvas. Like, if it's going to leave me a half a, a half of a, you know, square gap I don't care for that because I don't want my canvas to dry on that spot and it would if I left it that's the only time I don't like the perforated plastic otherwise I mean what I have noticed is they've been a lot a lot better on their over pour um on the sides of the canvas I've noticed that they don't over pour as hard as they used to um which I super 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 duper appreciate 
Um, so I don't have to worry about putting wash out because it's, you know, the glue is out to here. I don't have to worry about that. And I think that might be why they're talking about taking the washi tape out of their tool kits. Because as far as I'm aware, it's going to be both washi tape and the cover minder. Or at least that's what the Diamond Art Club rep said on Reddit. I don't, I don't know. They haven't really, like, made any official statement that I'm aware of. But um, the, the Diamond Art Club rep on Reddit said that both the cover minder and the washi tape were going to be phased out of the toolkit. I'm bummed about the washi tape just because I like the washi tape. But if they're going to be better about, you know, maybe that they don't have any overpour with their glue, then, you know, it's really just putting stuff down on these perforated sections so I can see them. But they've said that they want to put dotted lines on the perforation. Now that I don't know how I feel about it. It's expensive when you do larger pieces with crafts with craft. Okay, so I mean, I probably would have spent maybe the same amount then. So, I don't know. I don't know. But then, you know, there's enough people out there who do their own like you know, hobbies when it comes to like when they when they do their own um like less expensive kits from wherever any other company, any other company, whether it's, you know, or they don't even have to be less expensive necessarily, but there's other companies that, you know, they don't um, perforated plastic. And so having washi tape for that is nice, but Diamond Art Club shouldn't probably have to supply that for you if they're not, they're not the ones whose kits you're working on. Um, I, cause like I got, I got washi tape from Patty Wax when I ordered a kit from them. I don't know if my Jada Gem Shop comes with washi tape or not, because again, I haven't received it. But um, so Sarah, you'll have to let me know. Did you get did you get a washi tape with your Jada Gem Shop order? And then um, my Bella Art Diamonds one came with washi, I believe. I'm pretty sure pretty sure. Mm, I don't remember now. And I, I did not end up doing that, like, um, unboxing. I didn't end up publishing that unboxing. Uh, not for any specific, like, bad reason. It was just the, um, the canvas was not in the state that I expected it to be I got one that had um glue all over the bottom like bottom part of the canvas like out out and a little one corner and I um got a hold of Nicole and I was like Ooh, what do I do she told me to use um alcohol rubbing alcohol I asked does isopropyl alcohol work she said yes that so I used it straight I didn't dilute it. I didn't, I just used it straight because that's what I thought I was supposed to do. Um, and it ended up taking off like, um, some of the legend on that side. And then the picture of the dragon, like starting to get it on there. And it was, it was just not good. And it, it did what I felt was damage to the canvas. And so um, I didn't want to put it back in the video and then here it's damaged, you know, uh, and it, it is what it is. I'm not upset about it. I just, yeah, it just didn't seem like a good, a good unboxing to do because it had the glue on it. And then, yeah. Oh my gosh, these ABs against this blue. Oh, you guys. Okay. Okay. Almost there, almost there, and I'm going to show you. It is crazy. No, let go of my AB. This putty is starting to get real sticky, so it's trying to. Okay, okay. Hold on. All right, I'm going to, whoop, I'm going to flip you. I'm going to flip you around. Let, let me get these put away first. 
I'm going to flip you around. I'm going to show you our square. And then we're going to call it a night. <laughs> All right, here we go. Are you ready? I'm going to do a flippy. And I'm going to take the light off of it so it's not as, well, I want the light on it, but we'll see what it looks like. Okay, here we go. We're going to do a flippy. Here we go. Oh, hold on. Let me move this around with it. Look at that, you guys. It is so pretty. Oh, no. What happened? There we go. All right. The gradients on that are so good. I want the glare to stop. Stop it, glare. Stop it with the light. Gotta make it try and stop. There we go. That's a little better. Like, the light is really not doing it any favors because it's too bright. Um, no. Hold on. This one. There we go. Let me try and... No, that's still not doing it. I'm just trying to not have it have all the, like, diamond flash on it but so you can still see the colors because it is so pretty. Like the, the lights are really not doing it any justice. There's so much gradient in that. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. I can't wait until I get a better, bigger section than this because these ABs against this blue are like, they're in person, they're popping. Like it's just perfect. It's really, really just perfect. Maybe if I back it up a little, I don't know. I don't know, but it's really good, you guys. I'm beyond thrilled. I can't wait to finish it. Cannot wait. I'm trying to, like, where is that? Ooh. Nope. I'm just covering the light. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much for sticking around. I appreciate it. It was a good kitten chat. It was a good, like, even a whipping chat. I, I enjoyed it. Yes, you need to get this when it comes out on restock. It's Aji Sai by Margaret Morales for Diamond Art Club. Otherwise, uh, and you know, before you before you leave, don't forget, boop that like button. <laughs> Hit subscribe if you want to see some more content about diamond painting from me. Uh, you know, leave comments if you're watching this after. Congratulations on making it, I don't know, six hours in. I'm not even sure where. Four and a half, four and 45. Four hours and 45 minutes in. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sticking it out this long. Otherwise, I will see you on the next video, guys. Bye-bye.